Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Count Christo and this is Ryan Riaghi and we are your late night show hosts. Late night show. Absolutely, absolutely. For the final section of today's grandest LAN. A whole lot of things have happened. The blue flames have burned various players out of existence. But you know what they say, in order to rise from the ashes first, we must have ash. And so let's take a look around the world. Brian, you were, I think, looking at Serbia. I was looking at Serbia. <laughs> the, 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 inter the interesting thing about Serbia is they're currently allied with AI Ottomans I mean... who have been blasting through people. It's the Ottomans. It's the Ottomans. So it's to be expected. Obviously, some of you have been here for the last couple of hours and have seen all this. But just briefly, to give you a kind of recap, uh, first, let's hit the deaths. What's happened so far today is the Ottomans, there were various player alliances. Moldova had a treaty to give their, tr their uh, ships, that is to say, to the Knights and Byzantium, and it was all going on, and it didn't go well. The Ottomans, they kind of stomped them. So we've seen the Byzantium get wiped off the face of the map. We've seen the Knights get wiped out. And of course, those Moldovans uh, with the, the ships that they were sending out, they were hoping to get a return on that investment. They have not. So the Ottomans are growing out of control and Serbia, in a truly unholy alliance, have decided to go with the Ottomans. I mean, it's uh, it's a little... Suspect. I mean, if you can't beat them, join them. I think... Uh, uh, it's a little bit of... <laughs> I mean, if they couldn't have beat them. I kind of feel like they could have beaten them. Really? You think they could have beat them? I, I, well, here's my prediction, actually. I think they still will beat them. Ooh. I think this is this is clearly not an alliance of uh, of love. They're an well, AI. And they're we, useful to them. I, Ottomans is useful to Serbia. You know what's more useful to Serbia? Holding that land themselves. I mean, yeah. come well, on. Here's the other thing. Maybe some players might feel it's a little bit sketchy to ally the Ottomans. It's true. I'm looking across the Adriatic at the Papal State, and let's let's take a little bit of a look at their game so far. So there were various negotiations, and I don't want to go into too much detail, but there were various negotiations pre-game between the Papal State and Ferrara. There were discussions of where the line would be drawn in Italy, and that line... It didn't hold all so well. Alliances were made with AI nations up and down the It's a the squiggly peninsula. line. It's, it's a very it's squiggly a, line. It's those kind of awkward lines which result in a player getting absolutely yeeted. Ferrara was doing what they could do, trying to eat some local nations, but it totally fell apart. The Papal State put them in their place and hammered them by giving two of their provinces to the AI. The other one ended up getting released in the disintegration of Milan. Milan still somehow managed to take out the last province of Ferrara. Now, the Papal States, as we know, obviously, typically a fairly pious nation, they can't be too happy about the alliance between... I'm sure they're not. Serbia um, and... Especially because Serbia is lining themselves up with Wallachia. And we have heard tell that the currently orthodox king of Wallachia might be having a little bit of thoughts about the Pope in Rome. The Patriarchate in Constantinople is, of course no more they have fallen so perhaps a new religious leader could be coming to the fore in Wallachia which you have to imagine might lead to some conflict with Serbia yeah absolutely and I mean Serbia and the Ottomans Wallachia is gonna need all the help they can get um agreed agreed so I'm rooting for you Wallachia don't tell Serbia though <laughs> let's take a look at uh Western Europe right now. We saw some fantastic surges early in the game. We've got Desmond and the Isle both consolidating their local regions really, really effectively. Uh, of course, the next big road bump on their progress is going to be England, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, you know, how they're going to divide that up. They were allied to Brittany, but I hate to break it to you, in the break, France had a little something to say about Brittany, you know, doing the whole existing thing. Brittany is no more. They it's are, very sad. F and chat for Brittany. I mean, Brittany, they had the alliance with Provence. I have to know whether Provence broke off that alliance or if they were actually beaten in the war with Brittany. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but yeah, indeed, F's in chat for Brittany. Also, we saw Holland come into the war on the side of France against Brittany. Kind of kicking a guy while they're down. Brittany, as you will recall, 
badly lost the war earlier, trying to help the Isles get independence, and just got completely smashed by France. One of the interesting things we're seeing so far this campaign is some really strong AI nations. Ottomans and France are not letting the players have a good time. Normally, with this many players in Europe, you see a lot of consolidation, and you see it fast. The AI fall. And that's what we're seeing in Germany, very, very much so, and we'll look at that in more detail in a moment. But in France and the Ottomans, I think it's really interesting that these strong AIs are lasting, because of course, there's all kinds of diplomacy that's going on in the halls of this fair castle. They're talking about, you know, do we do this? Do we do this? They're making pacts, they're making treaties, but the AI, the AI they can do whatever people. they want. They can do they anything. They can do whatever they want. And a lot of players had confidence before they went into this that the AI wouldn't be a big problem. They thought, AI hey, Ottomans, AI hey, France, we'll just We'll just take them Deal out. with them, deal with yeah. them. But, I mean, that is not how it's gone, and that's left some real wild cards in the mix. Now, let's take a look at Northern Germany. This, to me, is the powder keg, the powder keg, that could result in some serious, serious conflict in this game. Let's count the ways, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There are 13 players in the two Germany regions. That is insane. It's too many. It's too many. It's a number that's going to fall. Absolutely. Um, I mean, who who's going to get yeeted here first? I feel like Hamburg, sorry, uh, Lübeck has been doing really well. They've got this strong alliance chain. If we take a look here in the north, we've got Hesse, we've got Hamburg, we've got Lübeck, we've got Pomerania. They're a really powerful block. And as we often see in these big campaigns, that northern Germany block very, very often retains that power a long way into the game. It's developed land, it's got great trade, they're looking really, really strong. The key for them is they need to maintain that coalition, that block. They need yeah. to be stay, stay tight-knit. The second that that falls apart, they're very vulnerable to everyone around them. Speaking of vulnerable, looking a little bit more on the outs here, we have Dipmarschen and we have Gotland. These two smaller nations, less wealthy, and looking at their alliance chains here, a lot less well connected. This looks to me like some of these battle lines are being drawn. Now, that being said, Dipmarschen has been making some friendly overtures towards Holland. Holland uh, recently obtained uh, East, Fr uh, East Friesland here from Dipmarschen peacefully on the basis, of course, that it is in their trade node. Uh, and that was part of a negotiation there. So, I mean, you have to imagine some kind of promises were made back and forth on that one. Yes, when we asked the community who they thought would have the edge going into this, a lot of people said Holland just because of the English trade node. And so I think uh, there's a lot of expectation that Holland is going to gain control of that trade node, and they understand that as well. They as do. long as they maintain control of that English trade node, they will be rich for days and days. They are, I mean, they are already exceedingly wealthy. If we take a look here, Holland's got 15 income per month. That is hefty. We compare that to the much larger geographically Serbia, and we're seeing 18.5. I mean, still, still really respectable from Serbia. Early on in the game, we've got some interesting things going on also in central Germany. So if we look here, at Frankfurt. Now, Frankfurt is taking an interesting playstyle. They are the immortal city. They are the eternal city, and they are only the city. Frankfurt is attempting to build tall. They are going for the OPM strategy. We'll see how that pays off for them. So far, they've got mines under them. Does mines have any claims? They do, so they have some ways to get out of there. But Hesse originally was offered vassalization by Frankfurt. That was not exactly taken very well, so we will see. That's a great point from chat. OPM does have OP in the name. I haven't Ooh, thought of that. That is very true. <laughs> uh, by that logic, uh, there's also plenty of other OPMs that perhaps AI OPMs well, will take over and win the game. If we look a little bit further south, we've got uh, Augsburg and Bavaria. Now, this is a strong South German alliance that I'm looking forward to seeing budding up against those northern Germans, because as you can see, right now, there's this little itty bitty buffer zone. This is a little bit of AI between Augsburg and Bavaria and the northern German alliance, and that right now is keeping them peaceful. You have to imagine, once they start bumping up against each other, the players do not want to stop growing, and that is where the conflicts are going to spark. But I will say I'm very happy to see uh, Augsburg here respecting the might of Ulm. Absolutely. Which is, as we I can see, I hope they continue to do tall. so. I mean, they don't really have a choice. Ulm would wipe the floor with all of them 
Yeah, I mean... It's, it's the most OP of the OPMs, of course. It's the OP in OPM. Exactly. OPMs were named after OM for being so OP. <laughs> We also have Switzerland here, of course, reformed by the three leagues, who have been pushing south into Italy. We'll see if they are content to continue doing so. They have friendly but not allied relations with Augsburg at the moment, as well as that alliance with Bavaria and Austria. It's interesting to see that no one has gone after Austria yet. There is obviously that hefty gold mine in Tyrol, which has had the Schwartz silver mine event fire, so it is cranking out a huge quantity of gold. You know the players are hungrily, hungrily eyeing that one. Oh, absolutely. And Serbia has their gold mine as well. Uh, Kosovo, of course, cranking it, it currently out. has 13 points of development in Ooh, it. Oh, they so have been upping that one a yeah, storm. Yeah, there might be some shortages there in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's, uh, you have to admit, that is likely. Looking a little bit further east, we have some rising stars. Oh, excellent. So, if you weren't familiar, Byzantium wiped out, played Georgia. Georgia wiped out by Ark, sorry, by Kara Kunlu. They then switched to Ark Kunlu. Of course, uh, you know, just switching name ever so slightly and uh, hefting it over to uh, then attack Karakunlu, and now they are back on top. So, our Byzantium player, the Phoenix, which has burned twice, now does appear to be rising from the ashes, and they've released and got Georgia back under them, which I'm sure they want some revenge on those Ottomans. They have to. You have to imagine they do. Of course, right now, they are Sunni themselves, so we'll see which way that goes. But also, the Knights over into Shivran, Maintaining friendly relations between Shivran and Ark Kunlu. Not surprised to see those two sticking back together and uh, you know keeping it keeping it friendly. Of course, uh, the Timurid Empire has completely imploded. Ajam is this time's winner of the Persian Thunderdome, and they are staying pretty friendly with the players. So we'll see if Ark Kunlu and Shivran can bring that power east. Now. Looking north a little bit more, Moldova. Moldova has been doing well. They had a very slow start. They were bumbling along, they were doing some development, they were doing some tech, you know, it's good stuff. But now they've taken this huge chunk. They essentially totally annexed Crimea all in one go. It was beautiful, beautiful to watch, I have to say. And now we're gonna start to see potentially some rubbing up between Moldova and those, those uh, you know, Phoenix players which are down in the south. Yes, they also have uh, Ryazan to worry about. Are they allied with them or any diplomatic ties to them that you know of? Not that I'm currently aware of. They do have, mm, interesting, they have some alliances with people that looks like they might be rubbing up against. So that is some, some conflict, but we potentially will see. we will see. Just to speak to chat for a moment, Giga, you're most welcome. I am wearing a shirt that uh, Giga was kind enough to give me in 2018, so thanks, Giga. I have a costume on um, because why would I not? It's the grandest of lands. I Look, have to have a costume I feel on. like Where's I'm being costume? called out, not only by my co-house, my wife is in chat calling me out for not having a hat on. Look, they don't fit me. <laughs> I've tried the hats on. There's a bunch of hats in that room. You don't want to see it, trust me. Do you me. think this hat fits me perfectly? It's just looking, resting on my head. I think you're it's, looking pretty good. Oh, it's looking you, good. It's you. looking good. Looking a little bit further to the north, Muscovy was the subject of the biggest war so far in this game. This struck, stretched from the very borders of Europe, the Ural Mountains in the east, all the way along to the Hebrides, the beautiful Hebrides over in the west. This was a mighty coalition, and Muscovy, as you can see, very much smashed. Whenever you see those green hatched lines, you know something has gone badly badly wrong. Muscovy, of course, was the source of the second uh, war declaration in the whole game so far. Peskov, mighty, mighty Peskov, declared war on Muscovy, Perm, Tver, Beluzeru, all of those vassals, all at once. Yes, as someone in chat points out, there is a war mm, currently between the thank Isles you, thank you, thank and you. England. Ooh, and it does not look like it has started amazingly for the Isles. No. This is... France is involved, however. It's I think a French war, in the fact. The Isles are actually just kind of waiting for France to step in and help. Which they may or may not be able to do. That is a hefty French navy with seven uh, heavy ships. The French on their side, meanwhile, only able to muster five. This is what I'm talking about. We have these, uh, these powerful AI nations that are bringing it all together, that are creating these wildcard situations. You know the Isles wanted to fight England on their own terms, but they're just not able to. Ryan, it, we're seeing them pushing up here. The lowlands have already fallen to in, in England, excuse me. <laughs> What's the Isles play here? 
Well, I, it looks like what they're doing is just trying to regroup and hopefully be there, I, regroup enough for France to come in and help. But like you said, they're not going to be able to do that. At this point, I don't know what the Isles could actually do to, to stop this English push. They are not that far behind England in terms of troop numbers. I'm curious to see in terms of quality. Um, if they actually stand a yes, chance. Yes, that's a great point. Let's take a look at tech levels here. We are both at uh, level five military. We've got no ideas on either side, so not a great deal of help coming there. Now, this is really interesting. Let's talk a little bit about the dynamic in the British Isles. We've got Desmond and we've got the Isles. They're obviously competing. Uh, right now they're allied, but you will note Desmond not in this war. Now, if I were the Isles, I would be saying, yes, okay, technically it's not my war, it's France's war, but you, Desmond, Get your ass in this war because they need, with Desmond's troops, hey, they can take out the English. Desmond is south. currently just moved their troops to the border of the Isles, so they might be thinking to start something. Interesting. They might well. And of course, if England takes Ayrshire, then the English Navy will be able to blockade Desmond, preventing them from coming over. Even with their navies combined, they can't take England right now. Uh, we're looking at a total lack of heavy ships on both sides. Oh, it looks like the battle is happening They're pushing right now into in Perth. Perth. No, Perth is hills. That means we're oh, taking the penalty. No. On the Isle side, you know that there are diplomats running from room to room, shouting at Desmond, Desmond! But, I mean, if you're Desmond in this situation, one of your enemies is killing one of your other enemies. You might be allied to one of your enemies, but... Yeah, this is an opportunity for Desmond. It does feel end. like an opportunity that they have decided to take, and that's a very unfortunate retreat for the Isles. The British are going to come in from the north. They're not oh. going for the stack wipe. See, that's, that's the lucky thing of fighting the AI. Right now, you can afford a few of these things, but, I mean, Desmond right now, sitting on plus one stability. They don't have a claim they could use to declare on the Isles, even if they wanted to break that truce. So you have to imagine they're not gonna do that. But thing is, let's say Desmond sits back and lets the Isles win. Okay, it's game theory. One of your opponents weakens your other opponent. England's gonna get too strong for them. What is Desmond gonna do? Okay, the great big island that's conquered all this stuff. I feel like grabbing the pale now is one of their only games. The Isles were doing so well earlier, the cheers that went up when they won. You'd were think triumphant. so. Desmond could pull a Serbia, perhaps, and ally with the big boy in town. <laughs> That's true, but then where are they going? They're just gonna colonize? I mean, England's <laughs> already got exploration ideas. Desmond hasn't. This, I well, mean. They do not. I don't know what they're gonna do here. What is the war goal? It's a French declaration of, on Picardy. So the thing is, unless Britain can get the Isles to 100% war score, they're not gonna be able to force them out, probably. Um, they can but there's another the battle, hitting. just a stack wipe. Yeah, this is not looking good. This is not for looking the Isles. good. I mean, this is this is really interesting. This is our third big AI nation that's making moves. That's meaning that so that the players can't just scheme and politics. Sometimes they have to just be able to present the clenched iron fist that is the only thing the AI respects in this game. It's going to be interesting to see. Just taking a brief look around the world, I know we want to keep an eye on that one. But let's take a look further afield. No huge changes. One of the last AI falling in northern Germany. You know once those run out, that powder keg has got to get heated up. I mean, look at Hamburg's situation. They're allied to Holland. Things are shifting in the north. That is very interesting. With Holland on their side, I feel like Holland might turn on Dip Martian. I mean, we that could is... potentially see a lot of dead players if that powder keg blows up. We absolutely could. I mean, have you heard of this thing called the First World War? There's like six different interconnected alliances here. Chat is wanting us to look at a poll, and that, of course, is fair enough because we, right now, that is to say, Ryan and I and all the players, have the privilege of being just about there. Oh, you know the exact pixel. I think we are actually in the O of a poll right we now. We are in the O. You heard I, it here first. I believe that's the case. And, of course, if we just take a look, I'm going to have to check here where is the uh, where is the gold mine in a pole do they even have the gold mine i'm not i'm not I, completely convinced they are do you saying, oh they went all the way over here oh and they have uh, for a second i thought maybe we could go outside right now and mine for some gold <laughs> i mean Man. i mean probably i mean it would take a while but we're in the first o of of a pole i believe i mean i, I want to get this renamed this is this should this is, should be like you know the we were here i think but well you would have to convince it's true it's true. Convince a player to rename that. I it think, uh, yeah. Goal. We're seeing a poll unifying those bohemian lands. What's their diplomatic situation at the moment? I think they're uh, they're pretty independent. They're looking at this alliance with, okay, and now I'm gonna have to, Ryan, help, yes. me, out, help me out here. Silly? S I, was being silly. I was being told earlier that because it's a um, it's a sl uh, Slavic name, apparently, so it's something like Sile. But no, maybe a I've always just said silly. Don't be silly. S <laughs> we can stick with silly, but. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Much needed. So let's take a look back here at the Isles. I mean, they are getting roasted and toasted. It looks like Desmond has still not come in. There's another declaration. 
Mazovia is getting its independence right now. Let's take a look here. Yep, Mazovia. Oh, look at that. They have mustered in a huge alliance to go against Poland, but I must yield the floor momentarily. We have the a Kaisar very important here. guest. This Welcome. is the Kaiser. Welcome. <laughs> Other way around. <laughs> there we go. Hello, hello, hello. I'm um, Kaiser Karl Wilhelm Charlemagne II, and it's very nice to see you all and greet all my citizens around the world and fans of the game. I hope you like and enjoy what's happening until now. No, don't back down. They're all your citizens. They're oh, under yes. your rule, all of them. <laughs> yes, and I still really would love you to love what's happening. <laughs> Otherwise, they might detonize me and kill me and whatever. So be happy about it. <laughs> it's true. We're anti-revolutionary sentiment in this chat. Are we? Right now? At Maybe. least against the Kaiser. Yeah, of course. You, <laughs> that's so useful. Helpful. Well, that's a lovely staff you have there. Um, well, thank you, yes. I've because been seeing you pound it around to make decrees and such. Mm. Exactly. It, it, gets some, it gets some attention. And heavy is the head that wears the crown. It's true. Quite literally. And heavy crowns. is the crown that's on the head, I think. Oh, it's so heavy <laughs> and hurtful, but... What don't we do for um, making you all happy? And, and what a beautiful like. crown it is. I, I really want to touch one of those jewels. Yes, please I mean, do. Let me just, oh yeah. That's good. That was definitely mined <laughs> somewhere in a big gem mine and shipped off and you bought it for 10 billion ducats, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah, so yeah. we still have like 20 million ducats more left. <laughs> of course, yes, of yes, course. So, so Paul, you've been asked to uh, rule on a few things so far this evening. Uh, some yes. players have had disputes. Talk to us about uh, a few of those. What's the, what's the hardest case that's come before the Imperial Court so far? So the hardest cases are when um, the players are using uh, the, the loopholes left in the right, mm. uh, like they are not allowed without a decree from the Emperor to uh, fight each other, mm -hmm. but they are allowed to fight their allies, which may be allies. So there were many wars happening which are, in the view from one side, legitimate, but the other face it says it's illegitimate. Then I'm using my brilliant and very corrupt judge to um, <laughs> somehow, somehow um, solve these disputes, mm -hmm. usually to the happiness or unhappiness of the sides. And, um, Talk to me a little bit about what happened in Italy, because I think Ferrara brought a case before you claiming that the Pope, I mean, the emissary of God, no less, was in fact an oathbreaker. How did you solve that one? Oh, yes, the judge got this to solve because, well, uh, it was a hard case to solve. Mm. In some way, um, both insights came to me. Um, signed an agreement, they had an agreement how they will split Italy, mm -hmm. and then one of these sides uh, decided to break this agreement and attack the ally of the another, of the other one, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the thing got very messy, mm -hmm. and um, the best way to solve it uh, was to create more conflict and more problems between them, <laughs> giving it to the most corrupt judge we have to solve so they will have some more reason to fight in the future. Um, yeah, and this is how we solve it, to create more drama and more stories, and not um, turn them down because we want to have more of player interactions which turn out to be messy but also interesting mm -hmm. and uh, motivate them to well, create alliances. Well, chat loves drama. I know that much. It's very true. It's very true. So one thing we've been noticing so far is that, of course, the subjects here loyal to you uh, have been doing fairly well in Germany. But I'm seeing a few people, uh, the Ottomans, France, England, these are people who don't owe any allegiance to your yes. crown, they're getting rather big. I think some of the people want to know what's the empire going to do about these huge non-aligned nations that seem to be getting rather strong. That's true. I mean, uh, Byzantium um, had a plan to fight against the Ottomans mm -hmm. and some promises of help from us, mm -hmm. but didn't really use them very well and um, somehow, yeah. You wouldn't, say, you wouldn't say that the help was insufficient, it's that they used it wrong. Yeah, it didn't, they didn't come for it in the right time because they see. earlier there and say, Emperor, give us 100 ducats so we can have more galleys to be safe, which would be the right strategy, I would say. And they would get the 100 ducats if mm -hmm. it just came to me. But, well, they didn't. They went to other friends mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know which countries right now, but surrounding mm -hmm. countries which also had interest in fighting the Ottomans, but it wasn't enough to fight them. While the lovely peasants of Brittany, who are really lovely players who mm -hmm. uh, roleplay, 
um, yeah, being a peasant republic of lowly but very humble and eager um, followers of the emperor. Um, Try to fight France, but well, Fell. the big blue blob, blob is a big blue it blob. blob. It blobbed. It blobbed. So we've heard a little bit about, about what's going on. I would, uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about who, which country in the world at the moment has Kaiser's favor. Who is doing your good work? Who is driving the nation forward? And the people we've got up for candidacy right now are Frankfurt, who's growing nicely. They've got one province. They're staying true to the design that the empire gave them. They're not yes. choosing their own borders. They were given their borders. They're happy with them. They're sticking with them. Exactly. Or the Isles right now fighting a desperate war against England. Again, someone who does not bend the knee to your imperial Absolutely. crown, which, I mean, is disastrous. The peasants of Brittany, long may they be remembered. Oh, there's a huge fight going on between the Isles and England. This oh. is a fight that could swing the tide and allow them to reoccupy their land. They have, in fact, been turning the tide rather well. It looks like it's England beautiful. has some men trapped over here. But just moving quickly through this, so Mazovia, of course, Team Tinto, obviously a great candidate, of course, not that I'm biased at all. And the heirs of Byzantium, who have risen from the ashes after one, not one, but two fiery deaths. So a poll is now up in chat. If you want to try and influence Kaiser's opinion, I can't tell you that the poll would be completely definitive because of course, the head that wears the crown I mean, makes the decisions really, Definitely. as we know, as we know. But look at this, the Isles, they're swinging for the fences. They want your votes, chat. Cast your votes now in the chat, see what you think. We've got Frankfurt, the Isles, Peasants of Brittany, Mazovia, and the heirs of Byzantium. You've got five minutes to vote, there's no hurry. Let's see if the Isles can give the people what they want, and of course, what we want right now is some AI squashing. It really looks like they are going to turn the tide here. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see how many loans that took them, because mm. if I know a right thing or two, now. turning the tide is very expensive. It's very true. The Isles right now are looking at 369 ducats of loans, which is, I mean, it's substantial. It's substantial. Right now, Frankfurt winning pretty heavily. And let's take a moment to look at this beautiful city that they're building. 34 development in 1469. That is pretty impressive. Surely the emperor, emperor must be looking pretty favorably on such diligent uh, industriousness. Surely you oh, yes. don't see them as rivals to the grand imperial city, right? I mean, no, the players from Frankfurt have created a beautiful storyline about the city that they are the dark city of uh, mm. knightly beings, immortal, eternal, and um, eternally devoted to the emperor under the, under the condition that they are not allowed to grow bigger than only this one uh, province. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they are devoted to the idea of staying an OPM. They may vassalize something, they might have some marches, but in the end they want to stay at OPM and play on this big city, playing tall and doing it differently than others. I so guess. they will maintain the Emperor's favor so long as they do stay an OPM. Exactly, but the moment they will grow bigger, their favor will be gone. Mm. And the wrath would fall upon them. I mean, that makes sense. Who else Who else have we got who's doing well in the I mean, the Isles, they are, they, I mean, this is one of those Phoenix stories. We were talking earlier about in order to rise from the ashes, you need ash. The Isles right here, not content to be cinder. They are fighting back hard against the English here. The English, of course, have been uh, spreading their troops around the place. And look at that, Holland coming in in the clutch with these heavy ships. I mean, of course, Holland, if you're not aware, chat Holland being played by, uh, at least partly played by a team, including the renowned Zlewik, who is one of the best things he's known of is uh, repairing your disaster campaigns. I mean, this was looking like a bit of a disaster for the Isles, and I don't know, it looks like the builder Zlewik is coming in here to save the day. Yeah, loans aren't too big of a problem. They can pay those off, perhaps even with some True. emperor's favor. Not to influence yes, <laughs> that in any way, of course. It's but true. It's true. But if only the citizens of the realm will be willing to help each of the sides, we can... Oh, oh my god! There it we go! Desmond, they saw that the tide had turned. I apologize, because I interrupted yes. you. I interrupted. But Desmond, finally in. And if I'm the Isles, I have to be saying, come on, Desmond, that was a little late. <laughs> they are in now, and they're charging in. They've taken the pale, but they have... Uh, and they're taking the seas. Now, they're confident that that's the same. But that is a very, a very late entrance from Desmond. They've declared their own war. Yeah, they don't have any negotiate. allies. It doesn't look like so. No, they didn't call anyone in, but they, I mean, with this ongoing thing, but that is, um, 
I mean, that's looking like the end of England, but declaring war that late, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty outrageous. If I were the Isles, I would certainly be having words, sending my diplomat over to have some words yeah. with Desmond. Depending uh. on how salty we'll say, the Isles <laughs> might be about that. Um, <laughs> they may not want to actually be friends with Desmond after Desmond takes all this English land, I'm sure. Mm. It'll mm. be interesting to see, though, when this war is over, depending on who declares the peace deal first, if perhaps Desmond might try to block off the Isles. The thing is, the Isles are in a, a tough spot because they are in a war led by France. Yeah. France, of course, as we've mentioned many times, not privy to the Empire's light and no. not held to his account, but we will see. It looks like Kaiser's vote has come down in favor of Frankfurt. So, Kaiser, people are proclaiming Frankfurt as the one deserving of your favor and your grace. Anything to say to that? Very well, I believe Hessen will be very angry about it oh. because of bickering and fighting on the court about if um, Hessen is allowed to block Frankfurt from growing um, mm. wassels by encircling Look them in um, their own alliances. This was their strategy. Let's encircle Frankfurt and um, disallow them from growing and getting any vassals. Why Frankfurt came to the court and say, um, hola, hola, it isn't, it isn't right, it isn't fine. We have no way of growing and it is... Uh, well, kind of stalemate um, enforced by NASA and uh, by Hessen hmm. on them, and by diplomatic work and job work from both of them, um, somehow it ended up that one of these countries um, bordering Frankfurt had to be released from the alliance with Fra uh, with um, Hessen. Hmm. So Frankfurt can at some point gain uh, um, well some foothold outside of their own hmm. city. And with with this new vote in favor of Frankfurt, uh, do you not think it might be prudent to uh, to go even further? Is there is there not more the emperor can do to preserve Frankfurt's ability to expand? I mean, we're seeing. Oh, we can send them condottieri en masse, or we can send them money. Mm -hmm. That's both possible. Mm -hmm. So, what mm -hmm. do you wish? Do you want us to send them money or people? Okay, chat. Yeah. Let's do real quick one this time. We're gonna do one in chat for money, two. For Condottieri. We'll just do it real quick. Frankfurt, of course, not currently in need of either, but when the time comes, do you think they need money? One or Condottieri? Two. We're looking at. I see a lot of twos. A lot of twos. There's still a, a, a quite a it bit. It seems of like one, the people but... favor Condottieri. Yeah. So it would be Condottieri for them. Condottieri, well. we uh, we perhaps should send a message to Frankfurt, letting them know they have these Condottieri uh, available to them. Uh, if perhaps our dear Mordred might be able to do that and inform Frankfurt that Condottieri are available to them. That would be much appreciated. And that's going to let Frankfurt, of course, have those opportunities because what the people of the dark city want to do, that's an overwhelming vote for Condottieri. Thank you, Chair. What these people of Frankfurt want to do is not, uh, not truly to subjugate. They merely want to bring more people under the protection of the, the dark, dark city's city. influence. It Thank sounds you. a little Thank bit bad you. when you say it like that. I but don't know yeah. what you're talking about. No, no, of <laughs> course. The morally oh, gray Desmond. cities of influence. How about that? <laughs> Desmond joined Has late. Joined after they could have had the best influence and then threw it all away. Desmond now losing men to England. That is, I mean, that is heartbreaking. That is, that is disappointing. Desmond arrived late and then performed poorly. I don't know why they're transporting troops across a strait that they control both sides of, but... Uh, uh, perhaps to navigate some uh, some zone well, it looks like issues, France has landed in the Isles. Um, the twenty k troops right now in the Isles mm -hmm. of of French. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and England. the Holland has landed in London. Of course, a mightily important trading province for the uh, British Isles node. And France landing another army in the south. That looks like it's curtains for England. But Desmond perhaps not able to get as much out of this as they might have done otherwise if they didn't screw up that landing. I mean, they, they're late. They're, they're doing it badly. I mean, that's, that's not looking fantastic. Uh, of course, it's looking even worse for the situation for England right now as they are getting... It uh, looks like devoured. England will not be one of those AI superpowers like the Ottomans in France. Mm. Um, I would consider the Isles the AI Slayer. I realize they're not privy to the, the glorious <laughs> empire, mm -hmm. but I am still very impressed by their, their defense against I England. I have to agree. And chat very kindly is pointing out, while the entrance of the emperor was very dramatic, we did miss the fact the Isles did a master move, stack wiping a 12 English army by blockading reinforcement with a navy. That was a beautiful move that turned the tide of that war. The Isles, of course, they're from the Hebrides. Their capital lies here on the Isle 
of sky and they know these lands, they know these waters and they use that to their advantage to turn the tide and smash the AI. Can we see the rest of the world? Yes, you can. I realize we've been a little bit laser focused here. First, I just want to see it's Hesse storming west here, taking out Liège. Very, very interesting to see. Now, looking a little bit further afield, Milan, interestingly, oh, subjugated by the Papal State, I think. No? Who are you a subject of? Oh, silly? What the heck? Okay, silly. well, that is a serious potential conflict point because, of course, Milan, all those cores, that is a, uh, that is a very interesting prospect. Silly might be able to finally get some moves because they've been in OPM and it hasn't been intentional. I'm glad that you asked how to pronounce their name because it looks like you're going to be saying their name a lot going forward. It seems forward. that way. It seems that way, but it's also potentially a conflict point between uh, once three leagues, now Switzerland and Silly because they, of course, came south, took these two provinces and Milan, they've got those cores and cores are tempting for sure. Very much so. I'm certainly a player who is tempted to just rush for cores immediately, sometimes a little bit too greedily. Ah, uh, yes, it should be uh, something that we can look a little bit further afield. If I, uh, if I take a look here in Observer, we will note that some players have been uh, mightily evicted. Wolfsongoli, is this the same? No way. Tlemcen can't have... No, okay, it's just the same player color being used. <laughs> I was very confused. We've got one in Morsangali and one down here in Madagascar. So we will see if they're going to be able to uh, to rejuvenate things here. I believe one of these is Sus and one of them is Brittany. Hopefully I might be able to get uh, confirmation is on that one. Brittany? No, Byzantium is up here in uh, in uh, Arkhunlu. Yeah, they um, want some revenge oh. against the Ottomans, I believe. I believe this is Sus and this is Brittany. That is very uh, sus. In terms of these two, but sus has been, uh, yeah, evicted, <laughs> hilarious. They've been evicted down here. Get out of my head, get out of my head, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they've been <laughs> evicted down here. But Wolsongali, a really nice place to bounce back from for Brittany. Uh, they've got some really nice uh, trade production in the area. Of course, Ethiopia, yet another mighty thing down here. Who is Hansa? That's a great question. I did know the answer to that. It's Ferrara. Ferrara is down here now in Hansa, not managing to make too many plays just yet. Ah. I spoke far too soon. They are stomping all over Hormuz. Okay, so, my dear Kaiser, obviously your, your ruling on Frankfurt will have long-lasting impacts. Uh, you have many court matters to continue to resolve, so it's, but it's yes, a pleasure Yes, I'm sure you're very you busy. The time you spent with us, <laughs> it's much appreciated. <laughs> oh, I am. Thank you a lot for the talk, and uh, good luck here. Have fun looking and watching uh, our game. Yes, oh, thank you, pleasure. Thank you, Kaiser. I'll take this. Try to. Thank uh, you very much. Excellent. It was an honor to be with the Kaiser. It was indeed always a pleasure. So let's take a look at this Polish war because this is going down at the moment. Mazovia is making their push for independence and they have pulled in the mighty German alliance. <clears throat> this might is be a seeing... very large war. Absolutely. Uh, the deluge appears to have started in Poland at the moment. We've got Moldova from the south. We've got the Luthonian order and their Teutonic subjects to the north. We've got, I need to skip that song. We've got the Livonian Order and the Teutonic Order coming in from the north. We've got Pomerania and Lubeck coming in from the west. The division is coming for Poland. You have to imagine these people are going to separate peace. They're going to try and take out as few, many of these as possible. Chat is mentioning, is Flory going to be one of the hosts? I'm delighted to confirm that Flory will indeed yes, be with us tomorrow. He will be tomorrow. here tomorrow. He's not a player, and if he was, I'm sure that he would do <laughs> very well. Laurie right now is uh, just running around stream to stream. He's giving advice using his expert wisdom to help out some of the players, which should be great fun. I mean, PLC, they're not having a great time. No, uh, they're not. Just now, but it's uh, it's going pretty well. Just to point out, someone's yeah, on someone mic. who's got <laughs> yeah. some Sorry. mic audio issues. Uh, <laughs> we're good now. It was okay. it was from it was the Kaiser's ghost. I oh, believe. look at this. Okay, a poll not content to stick with their uh, with their original name has now formed Silesia. That gives them uh, a new mission tree, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I'm mistaken. Never mind. But they are uh, they are advancing quite nicely here. Probably having eyes, you have to imagine, on these lovely mines down here in uh, in Hungary. 
seeing what they can do to get here. Granada is doing things. Look Ooh. at this. Speaking of phoenixes rising from the ashes, Granada is doing what they can do. Granada is a famously hard start. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Big with the, props to them. Absolutely. With the aid of Telemson, they're certainly doing better. Sus is back on the map, by the way. Not player control, but very much back on the map, which we love to see. Granada doing nice things. And the English war looks like it is now approaching its end. You Indeed. can see they're getting completely swamped. Interesting to see who's getting the occupations here. Yes, I'm going to be interested in this partition France, of England, as we'll call Holland, it. Holland, Isles, and then a one <laughs> Desmond, two counting the pale. That's what they get for being late. I mean, you said it. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> I can't dispute that. So, chat, I want to I wanna take a little moment to step back here. We all know that this North German powder keg is not sustainable. <clears throat> Once the players butt up against each other like this, there's only one thing can happen. It starts with the blue flames and it ends with phoenixes falling back into their ashes. So, I want to hear your theories. Who is going to start it? Who's going to make this powder keg explode? We've got an incredible collection of nations up here. We've got Lubeck, of course, looking pretty strong, looking pretty dominant, but coming up from the south, Augsburg, Bavaria, got these industrialized southern areas. Holland versus Lubeck, it's an interesting theory, but Holland connected to Hamburg seems a little less likely, and Hamburg doesn't have that reason to push east as much as they do south. We've got to remember that Holland's trade node is the British Channel, English Channel rather. They've got a lot of stuff that they're going to try and pull in down there and Absolutely. draw that if in. If I were Holland, I would focus on that channel and try to get as much money from it mm. as quickly as mm. possible. One theory in chat is that Pomerania and Hamburg may try and petition Lübeck. That would certainly be a bold play, a treacherous one, for they are in various pacts tying them together. We should take a shot every time this guy says the word Phoenix. Don't. It's a I'll, nice word, I'll, Phoenix. I'll, I'm, you may, uh, I, w I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> Don't test me on that one. But Pomerania and Lübeck, we should note, the first two people to start a war together. They, I have, a, I have a photo right at the beginning. There was the handshake that began the first war of the campaign between Lübeck and then Volgast, now Pomerania, to start this thing. Hesse does seem like they're in a strong position, but <clears throat> I think they're a little hemmed in. I think Hesse is the one with the biggest need to start that conflict. I mean, they are, they're looking, they have access across to the west, they have some more people across to the east, but once that's happened, you know, they're a big, thin, undefensible. Pomerania going for Prussia. Now this, I think, is a good theory. Absolutely. Everyone wants to form Prussia. You want to get those fantastic national ideas. And this is great territory. It's in the right trade node. And right now, the Livonians looking a little bit strong. They are allied formally? No, merely in a war together. Pomerania versus the Teutons? Definitely, definitely prospect. Hesse with liability alliances. Now, I like that phrase. That's a, certainly a good way to put it. So, including a royal marriage and an alliance to an AI. I mean, that's a little suspect, I have to imagine. Well, I mean, denying Saxony to Pomerania, to Silesia, to the allies of Lübeck, and notably not allied to Hamburg. And this mm. is how these webs of alliances come undone. When we're looking at Hesse being allied to two sides here, we're looking at Holland being allied to Hamburg but not Lübeck, and we're looking at Lübeck being allied to Hamburg and not Holland. You called it earlier. It is like World War One. It kind of is. It kind of is. I mean, I want to know which of these defense, which of these alliances are merely defensive and which of them are handing out blank checks because that's where it all going to start to go. They've got Holland, Saxony, and their own vote. That is an excellent point. Thank you, chat. Let's take a look at who's going for, not the true emperorship. Of course. We all know who the true emperor is, it, but for the Holy Roman Empire, you know, the, the lesser mini emperor. Title. Exactly. Thank you. Perfect. The demi emperor, perhaps. Yes, perhaps. Right now, we've got four votes for Bavaria, one vote for Hesse. They actually don't have the vote from Saxony. Saxony also married an allied to Bavaria. Bavaria making a very strong play. How old is Austria? Is it still uh, Frederick? It is. So he's 55. He did manage to have an heir pretty early. And interestingly, Hesse actually has managed to get the Habsburg dynasty, which could mess up some mission trees, I don't Ooh. wonder, because you can't reform Austria. Or I think that's right. I think there's an event to reform Austria, but it requires that the Habsburgs have been extinguished. So we will see. Bavaria looking very strong in their play for the Empire title. But of course, you've got to remember, 
getting to the Empire ship in this game less influential than it could be. Because you're never going to unite the Empire. You're never going to be able to pass the reforms. Come on. There's yeah. just too many players. There's too many AI getting eaten up. You're not going to be able to maintain the numbers. You is need. it worth the bonuses? I think is the real question. It's a lot of manpower. It right is. Right now, being the Empire is giving Austria a boost of... Get, I think I hover here. I should definitely know this. We'll just look <laughs> at it from here. They're getting a uh, 20,000... Sorry, 27,500 bonus just from being the emperor. And in terms of tax, I think it gets delivered here. Yeah, they're getting a little bit on tax. Not a huge amount, but 27,000 manpower, that's a lot. It and is. I think going for demi-emperor is a valid strategy here. It absolutely is. And they're also getting, of course, you mustn't forget, a nice boost of 22 here. So that's pretty good. Silesia Coalition, yeah, let's have a look I'm at being Silesia. told. Including Austria, <gasps> Saxony, and the Palatinate. Hungary is eligible to join. Poland is eligible to join. Pomerania is eligible to join. Lubeck is eligible to join. Silesia, right now, allied to only Wallachia. We could see a player coalition. Silesia has dug a little too deep and a little too greedily, and it looks like they're about to push even harder against Poland. Poland can't join, they have a truce. I'm talking about the, uh, the amount of aggressive expansion, not literally who can join right now. That's silly, haha. -ha. Thank you, Jeff. It's very silly. It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, snare drum. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it wasn't good enough to receive oh, a snare drum. Come on. I'm sorry to say. Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah. It received that instead. I think if Silesia pushes harder into Poland, I mean, they're not allied. They're not in this North German alliance. They are being very aggressive for people who are sitting here with 18k troops and no alliances. Yes, they have Wallachia, but Wallachia is a long way away. I mean, that's... I mean, pretty... surely they see the threat of this. It's an interesting decision to just go full throttle and keep going full it throttle. It certainly is. It certainly is. I mean, they've got that diplomatic reputation, but I'm not sure how that will help them once they're, uh, once they're getting there. I mean, that is a... Mm, okay, here's something interesting, though. I mean, Pomerania... <clears throat> moving men around with military access to Silesia, of course, because that joint war. Ah, oh, it looks like Silesia just pieced out. They took Krakow uh, in the, or, well, I'm in Poland, perhaps I should say Krakow, who have taken that from Poland uh, and yoinked that from them. Presumably, this is going to mean their coalition state is even worse. No truce with Hungary, I believe. Yep, no truce with Hungary, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised they haven't joined already. Ah, Hungary, actually, I didn't notice this. They're... That changes the dynamic. They are a personal union. Yes, they are a personal union of Austria. I which mean, that's not good for Serbia. That's very bad for Serbia. That means there, there, were, there were talks. I can't give you specifics because my, my lips, they are sealed. But there were talks about petitions of Hungary and all of that is going downhill. They already had Krakow. Thank you, chat. I apologize. They I want to point out, a Serbia is actually allied with Austria now instead of the Ottomans. Really? Yes. Well, that is quite the switcheroo. We've got to see, is there an Austrian truce? There is. It's ending in a mere two years. We will then presumably see Serbia crushing down east, trying to drive the Turks out of Greece. We'll see if they do the uh, Byzantium revival vassal feed that we all know and love, but we will see. Lip sealed, get that man a drink or two. It won't work. Well, and if Serbia does declare on the Ottomans, which I think we assume they will, that means we could potentially see um, AQ attack the Ottomans, and you can talk about phoenixes some more. We could. It's true. It's true. It won't be good for some people in chat's livers, but we could. I mean, let's take a look at the Ottoman situation from the, their perspective here for a moment. To the east, they have the rising phoenixes. Arkunlu, Georgia as a subject, of course, but nonetheless, and Shivran. These are motivated players. I mean, I, you haven't seen them yet. They're out there dressed in crusader garb. They've got the knight's cross on their chests. They've got the chain mail. They're looking fantastic. These are people who are seriously motivated to come at the Ottomans and come at them hard. Then, to the west, we have Serbia and Wallachia. Two nations with, especially with that Hungarian switch up there, with that alliance with Austria. They've very much got nowhere else to go. They need to come down here against the Ottomans. And then looking at the Ottomans' diplomatic situation, it's a whole lot worse than it was. They've lost Tunisia. They've lost Crimea. Those were the two big allies that kept them in those early wars. But what do I spy? It seems our oh Phoenix is also a turncoat. <gasps> No, they would not. Um, I mean, I did say earlier, if you can't beat them, join them. It appears that the Ottomans are with you on that one. We've seen Art Lu enter an alliance with the Ottomans. And I have to imagine Serbia right now is going, 
guys, 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 come on. That is not the side that you want to be taking <clears throat> in, as chat so eloquently puts it, the great race. For and the city that of the will desire. be a huge war. Serbia and Austria versus the Ottomans and Ak-Q. Uh, it, that'll be one to watch Ooh, for sure. It certainly oh, will. England. Speaking of one to watch, Desmond's chance to redeem themselves, and they are going for it. We have seen three provinces go to Scotland. No doubt, Scotland intends to release uh, Wales. This is, in fact, the correct province to take if you wish to release Wales down here. It both gives you access to fabricating lots of claims down here, as well as releasing Wales to the north. Uh, that means they're going to be able to do, you know, a reclaim uh, cause war. They may release uh, Northumberland, of course, also in the north. They probably would have only taken one of those provinces, though, if they were intending to do that. But now we'll see. <clears throat> What's Desmond going to do? They're still allied. I, I mean, I would like to be a fly on the wall of those diplomatic negotiations. You have to imagine Scotland is not happy. Oh, and of, they are probably I didn't even very notice. heated negotiations. Oh, speaking of Scotland, they're Scotland. The Isles is no more. Yeah, I didn't uh, notice that. F in chat for uh, the Isles. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 uh. Yes, uh, the Isles is gone. Mm. <laughs> it looks like I was looking around to see are they are they completely dead? I think they are. The Isles um, has a tag switched to Scotland. Um, oh, so they are now. I mean, a still reborn the Isles. Isles. Yes. 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 It's it's the Hebrides in our heart. No F for the Isles. Only glory as they ascend. Are, are you anti title. Isles? No, I'm very much pro Isles. I happen to have a dear love for the Hebrides. I okay. Tell you, okay. So. You you can get away with that. But uh, yeah, there is a uh, a very beautiful cave just here, uh, and there is a whirlpool that forms between these two islands. Believe it or not, it's one oh, of the largest really? in the world. It's quite dramatic. Yeah. I would love to see that in person. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. So oh. the uh, we'll see how Desmond goes on this war. You have to imagine that the uh, the push in here is gonna be it's gonna be interesting because if Desmond takes a really aggressive amount of land, enough to mean that there could be a uh, a coalition formed against them, we're gonna see where that goes. I mean, I think there's a a very real chance that Scotland might say, that's not good enough. And as chat points out, very good point, yes, there is now a French settlement in Cornwall. They have taken some of the British Isles. This is, again, these worrying um, moves by, uh, excuse me while I do this. By uh, some AI who <laughs> perhaps are looking to prove that AI yes. are the strong ones in this grandest land. Um, It'll be interesting to see if players collectively decide, you know what, the AI has been bullying us around. It's time we just shut them down once and for all. <clears throat> because the, the players may, in fact, have some rivalries between each other and some very compliment, complicated uh, diplomatic ties. But if I was a player continually getting bullied around by some of the AI around me, like especially the Ottomans, it doesn't... Who wants to get bullied by the Ottomans? I would definitely say, hey, yo, I know we got some differences, but let's sort those out after we take out the AI. I mean, I would think so. I would think so. What I'm interested in is who's the coalition against France? We've obviously got Provence. They're, they're, they're building their noodly appendage down the right-hand side of France. Bear with us, by the way, while we just do this quick rehost. Yes, we are having a, a little rehost. Um, Not a problem, but thank you, chat, for reminding me. I've got reminders coming in my ears, from my eyes, and from chat to disable the Sabaton soundtrack. With a heavy heart, speaking as a Sabaton lover myself, don't worry about it. They're good songs, but they're good songs. very sad Obviously. that we can't listen to the on stream. It's unfortunate. The thing is, no one's going to go against France until England's dead, at least from the Isles. That's my opinion. Uh, and we're going to have to see if that stays true. I um, would be curious if Holland ever wants to gun for France, perhaps early. That might be a bad idea from their part, but um, we have seen these are humans and they make questionable decisions. They do. They do. If I might possibly have the game information, please. Uh, the rehost ongoing here, what I want to see is whether that Ottoman alliance with Arcunu is going to break down. Because to me, I mean, that just seems... You could say, uh, it surprised me. I was so confident. It does. They were going to take revenge. You would think. We were you talking about their think. Crusader outfits. They didn't seem the type to they turn They didn't. Cult. They didn't. It might be temporary. It might be to facilitate the backstab. Questions in chat. By the way, now a great moment to throw your questions in chat while we're not able to, uh, to show you too much Absolutely. on cam. So do throw this in there. When does the live stream stop? Midnight. Midnight CE. ST, uh, 
we on summer time? Probably um, not. It's the winter. It's winter. C-E-T. <laughs> so that's in about an hour. So we've got about an hour and a little bit left of stream. Yes, yes. Stream team, we unfortunately appear to have two sets of music playing. Looking at servers, seeing if we can get ourselves back in here. Not quite yet. Act just using AI to eat some land? Possibly. I mean, it could be a very long term. They don't really need them, is the thing. I mean, they, they're surrounded by some pretty small people. It, CEST ends at the end of this month. All right, it is CEST. Thank you. You can tell I don't live in the CEST time zone. I mean, I don't either. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you live a whole ocean away, so I'm not sure what excuse I have. But we will well, see. We will you see. know about very cool whirlpools. So I do. You are <laughs> forgiven do. for is CST that, mistakes. Is that enough to uh, to allow? I me? think so. I think so. I mean, Scotland in, is an hour behind CST. So it's true. It's true. I was gonna say they're in CST, and I realize they're not. <laughs> Show that poor man Augsburg. I will. I will. We I'm, will as I'm, soon as we get back I'm in the game. I'm not in the game yet. I'm trying. Try, trust me. I'm trying. But this is your opportunity to. Talk about it's whatever, true. ask your question. Are there any rules posted for this game? That's a good question. I'm not sure if we have There them are, publicly. yes. Um, on the forum post, I believe we have a section just for the rules. Now, I will warn you, there is a lot of rules, like a, a lot. There, The rules are sectioned off into entirely separate areas, and there's still like pages and pages per section. So, yes, check out the forums. Um, I believe it's just called Grandest Land. Mazovia Castle, something like that. Um, and in that post, there is a link to the full rules page. You're free to read it at your will. Cool. I should inform you, chat, we are going to be on pause here for just a moment. We're doing a few little tricks to uh, mix up the save game slightly. Nothing too major, just a few little things getting fixed in the backgrounds here. Well, this is the price we pay for hosting such a lovely it's live true. event it's with true. people in person like what is it a hundred people something like that it is quite an experience walking from you know vaulted room to vaulted room all surrounded by people playing e4 a it's lot of a people delight. running too running from there's place quite to a place. lot of running going on absolutely true absolutely true tell your friends to kill celestia i'm not sure i need to tell them i think they might be coming to that conclusion on I, their yeah, own yeah i i do think celestia is deciding well it's time to get spicy here mm. and um just have everyone fight us mm. Asking in chat, how are the knights doing? I have some bad news for they, you. They, they died a little while ago. Not only have they died, their new country is allied to the Ottomans. I'm still very sad about the knights. I know Mordred was devastated when he saw it. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not looking great. It's not looking great. Heresy, indeed. You have to imagine the Pope's not greatly, uh, not overjoyed by this turn of events, but we'll see how that works out. We'll see how that works out. Coalition does look it's going on. Well, QQ8 has that? Could you uh, just show me yes, the, uh, uh, the Gulf of uh, the Arabic Gulf? For um, yes. Let's switch to. They've not eaten Hassa. Hassa has actually grown. You can't see this chat, but I can. Hassa has grown quite substantially, uh, but though they are not at war with uh, Arkunlu, although they are not allied to them either, so we could potentially see some conflict on that. Yes. Well, we are going to give you. Uh, a little bit of a break from me and Ryan's voices here for a moment, and we're going to rest <clears throat> our voices for a second while we get some of the people who are making this incredible game for you all, making all of this possible by doing the actual dev work on the thing. We have a couple of members of Paradox Tinto who I'm delighted to invite over to uh, take over. So without further ado, please do come on over and we will uh, yield our seats. Yes. Not your point yet. We're going to oh, keep I him. Stay? All right. You're only getting rid of me. Oh, only you. Okay. I think I should take it I get to stay with my friend's Tento. Do you like my, my lovely hat, by the way? Well, first things first, I think you should introduce yourself to the chat. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, hello. Are hello. You, uh, here, we'll make some room. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we introduce ourselves. Uh, hello, my name is Roger. Uh, you may have seen me in other streams. I'm content designer at uh, Tinto. Morning, the guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit what head of operations usually does?
you make sure that the engine runs smoothly. <laughs> That's one of <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 As smooth as, as, as can. You tell people what to do so that things kind of go. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> she, she is behind us with a whip. And <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. I'm bringing coffee. <laughs> yes. Oh, there. A chat is having some audio issues, unfortunately, with um, your audio. Uh, so we'll nice wait on that. Don't worry. Um, but in the meantime, could you tell us? I think most people know what content designer usually does, but tell us what a day in the life of content designer usually looks like. Uh, yeah, well, content designers, we obviously design the content and create the content. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, doing research, uh, in general, historical research of uh, what was the, the period, what was happening at that point, so that we can find inspiration for events or for mechanics or for things to introduce into the game. Uh, and then we create the, the narrative. I mean, we create the events, we write the whole text, the descriptions, uh, and all that. You are the people that make things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's 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 quite it, you know the answer is in the name content, yeah, content designer. Content designer. So, we create the, yes. the content. <laughs> well, I know that a lot of people have a lot of different feedback. How do you usually sort through some feedback that might be conflicting with other feedback? Uh, well, generally we try to get uh, as much as, uh, information as we can from the forums and from everywhere. And then we sort it a little bit out, meaning, okay, what makes sense? Uh, because sometimes you, we can get a lot of crazy ideas, good ideas, but crazy ideas. Okay, yeah, this would be good, but is it doable? Can yeah. we put it in the well, game or, or in, not. in some ways, having too much information is not a bad problem to have because you can sort through it yourself and sort of figure out what do we like about this, what exactly. do we not like about this. Exactly. So I, even if you think your idea is absolutely crazy, I would still recommend putting it out there. Exactly. As much uh, as ideas we can get from forums and such, it's great because, uh, I mean, we can research a lot, but People know a lot of things. Oh, and yes. As many people we can have that are passionate and knowledgeable of certain aspects that we may have difficulties finding because obviously uh, not all information available is in all languages. Yeah. So there's maybe some people from some places that have a lot of information from that area that we cannot get, mainly because it's not translated. So it's great to have uh, a lot of people giving uh, their feedback, their suggestions. So we ideas. are able to rejoin the game here. Um, I believe it is back up and running. So if I can quickly find it here. Um, let me see. Now, chat. You are going to um, see. You know what? I may just connect. Oh, oh yep. Me. Here we go. Here we go. We can get back in on the grandest land, which I'm sure is what everyone is here for. But you guys are free to talk about the stuff at Tinto. I mean, this is the opportunity for chat to ask Tinto some of the questions they may have. Um, so if you have any questions for Tinto chat, um, go for it. And we can ask the first one. Can yes, I believe uh, now that they can <laughs> hear you, we can go back to you. Um, so we were saying you are head of operations. You're mm -hmm. operations manager. Yeah. Which, could you explain a little bit about what that actually means? Yeah, so basically uh, when products said that they wanted to create a studio in Spain, so they needed someone to uh, start creating things and make things move and make things happen. So um, we had Yuan and uh, then we had me. So <laughs> <laughs> so we had to create the, the, the studio and, and hire everyone and find the location and uh, just make things uh run and happen. You do a lot. You do a lot of different things as well. Yes, it's crazy how much. You do what needs do. to be done, mm -hmm. essentially. And we're a really tiny team, so a lot of it falls into into us. So it's uh, crazy. It's just um, we need to change our hats all the time. Well, it's, it's a nice little family because mm -hmm. having a tiny team, of course, means you don't have as many people to do 
everything. But it also means everyone gets to know each other a little bit more, and it's more tight knit. You know, it's yes. we there are some advantages to, to that. That's for sure. Yes. So um, we have the family man mindset, and that's actually something that we want to foster. Like, uh, I'm a little bit responsible of the culture as well. So it's important that we all try to help each other. And even if it's not within maybe your job description that much, sometimes you need to <laughs> go a little bit above and beyond. Yes, and people say that you have a whip. I've been told, but it's a very soft whip. It's a feather whip. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need that, right? Nah, in general, We just no. have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Positive reinforcement. Yes. Positive reinforcement. We don't even need a carrot and a stick. We just have coffee and cookies and Red Bull. <laughs> Well, um, I believe we are back in. Uh, we need to switch to the Observer Nation, which um, I believe... Could we, could we get back set up to Observer? Because I believe the game is um, it's on right now. Thank you, Alex, very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, it is it is set up. All right, so um, thank you very much for your patience, chat. In I want to take the opportunity to say that it's really nice to have feedback from um, all the fans and all the community. It not only helps us to improve and know the areas we need to change, but also when uh, the feedback is, is, is good, it's really motivating for the team. So keep uh, keep the positive comments coming in. Uh, we read all of it, um, the bad as well, so uh, it's always positive. If it's good, it's good, and if it's bad, uh, Well, like it's we good were saying well. before, you can't have too much information. Mm -hmm. um, as long, I think the key with sort of bad uh, feedback and bad comments is it, keep it constructive and mm -hmm. make respectful, sure that you're very respectful, yes. And they will listen, listen to yeah. the feedback a lot more if you actually mm -hmm. keep it constructive. Possibly, I don't want to say simple, but concise. Yes, you know. uh, definitely. And if you have ideas to improve not just the problems, it's even better. Yes. <laughs> it makes our job better and, and easier. One of the nice things about this event is you guys get to go around and talk to people about their ideas in person. Mm -hmm. And I've already seen people go on and lecture about a whole thesis of ideas. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's been an amazing opportunity mm -hmm. for both you and the players doing so. Yeah. It is exactly. really nice. We actually. can get direct access. Yeah. Some people just saying, I don't understand this. <laughs> and we try to explain it. And have you tried this and this? It's always good. People ask a lot about monuments, I've noticed. Um, it's an ongoing trend. People love monuments. They like very big buildings. Yeah. <laughs> um, last DLC was great. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree. I'm sure you two agree as well. The last DLC was amazing. Yes. It's one of the best build now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is one of the best DLCs we've had. And I think that it, the audience reception of that reflects that in a lot of ways. Um, I do know that a lot of people were talking about the DLC itself being content that isn't needed to play the game, whereas the free update has a lot that changes significantly, such as AI improvements and such stuff like that. And people really, really enjoy yeah. that aspect of it. Um, it was a really good uh, team effort, I think. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. All you the teams were doing a spectacular job, I think. And everything aligned. And, and I, know. <laughs> I know how hard you folks worked on it. I mean, just hours and hours and days and weeks and months of looking at the DLC, looking at everything, making sure things work. And it did pay off in the end. Um, so I believe we are back in. Um, I don't know if it's you taking control of... If you want, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, we can always just switch out when needed. <laughs> but, uh, yes, let's get a little recap here. If you go into the player map mode, we can have a look at the major expansions going on here for players. Last we left off, Scotland has reformed. They used to be the Isles, and, well... They um, they were reborn as Scotland. Um, so, I'm currently getting my grips on things and making sure that region. I am... Oh, what was yeah. that? It's <laughs> interesting to, to see the whole yes. map. Because, There's uh, a lot of information here. Yeah, we were playing as Venzovia, and we 
we're like in a really tense situation with our independence war. Yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about how Mazovia was going. <laughs> like, <I said>. yeah. <laughs> we're going to be out, I, wiped out. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, playing the first part and it was uh, really difficult because we had really bad luck with uh, the AI. Mm -hmm. We were trying to get uh, support for independence, but nobody wanted to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're stuck uh, for a whole time trying to see how to get out of being a vassal of Poland. Uh. Fortunately, fortunately, Poland was not trying to integrate us yet. So we were quite relaxed on that point. But uh, at some point, they started trying to integrate. Well, and then we reached out to other players and tried to secure some deals. But in the end, we did manage to get a couple of players <laughs> to Last we saw help. Poland, they were in a bit of a very large pickle. And what do you have to say about Poland being in the situation of uh, wars that they are very much on the losing side of? Uh, we like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we wanted from the start. I uh, can imagine so. Yeah. Uh, when I was playing, I was waiting for a long time for Moscovy to declare war on Lithuania. And no. Moscovy was declaring war on everybody but Lithuania. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, come on. <laughs> but yeah, eventually we did manage to secure uh, some support and we are now winning the independence war. How so many other player there. teams have you interacted with diplomatically? Uh, a lot. A lot. It's a lot <laughs> yeah. of talking. Not, that much? not as directly because, uh, yeah, I was playing at first and then I was uh, giving support to the person playing. But uh, yeah, the really. other content designer, uh, Ogele, um, uh, Has he been your main yeah, diplomat? Yeah, he was running around <laughs> <laughs> like a madman. He knows man. where everyone is located in the, well, in the castle. That's the thing about the diplomats I've seen. Their their primary job is to run. Their secondary yeah. job is to talk a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he was coming to us like every five minutes. Uh, this player is saying this. That player is saying that. <laughs> he was okay. It's been super useful. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and Kuba was also like yeah. uh, our release uh, engineer was also complaining. Uh, oh, I've been walking a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super tired. Because you were walking around in the castle yeah. earlier before the game exactly. started, it's a big castle looking as at well. cool things and <laughs> posing and mm -hmm. <laughs> generally being goofballs in the castle. I'll, I'll call you out. <laughs> well, we are in a big castle, so what else can you do but explore it? Exactly. So. <laughs> You're here. Take the opportunity. Exactly. Exactly. We're here, so may as well. Not only are you in a castle, you're in a castle and you're able to play at U4. That's yeah. a, a pretty grand experience, you could yeah, say. Yeah, it's I, the most immersive you, experience I've ever had. You could say it's the grandest. It's the grandest. The grandest of lands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, because last, last year you participated from the garage. Yeah, of exactly. Our last year I participated <laughs> in the land as well, but we were playing from a garage, literally. Okay, perhaps not <laughs> as prestigious as a castle. Yeah, exactly. No. no. Everything no, no, no. was being built, and that's the only place where we could put the setup for the streaming yeah. and everything. So yeah, it's been it's a, your it's own a personal castle. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, very small, but. <laughs> Someone says, can't believe you're set up in a castle with actual diplomats running around. Um, and yet there's assassination. There's yet to be assassination attempts. Well, mm -hmm. there is a, what is it? Um, spy master for the emperor. Yes. Who, if I recall correctly, they are to assassinate. You have to assassinate the Apparently. spy master to become the spy master. Yes, exactly. exactly. And so that's where the role play elements sort of come in on this whole entire event. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys really interacted much with... Uh, not we, yet. Like uh, one of our, our diplomats has. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. haven't assassinated anyone yeah. yet. <laughs> I myself, I haven't done anything because. Uh, you have not personally assassinated not anyone. Personally. That's very good yeah. of you. Yes. At least not that I can say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe the emperor may have your favor. Um, we have spoken with His Majesty, mm -hmm. and we have gained some favors first, and. His Majesty has been really kind to us. Uh, of course he has. Helping he's, us. He's been a glorious emperor. And if he's listening emperor. to us. 
<laughs> if he's listening to us, I may say he's a very kind, very beautiful man. And just. And just. <laughs> and of <wise>. course. <laughs> of course. He's the em the Kaiser, I'm sorry, for a reason. Um, earlier, we, my streaming partner and I, decided that the Emperor of the Itchery is henceforth known as the Demi-Emperor because he is not as glorious as the actual Emperor. Exactly. Um, and I have to say, the weird little role play, uh, diplomacy stuff between players, the Emperor going around and saying, I decree you favorable, I think this, I think that this should go like this, that is honestly part of what makes this event so special. Because it's one thing to play EU4 and sort of metagame a little bit and play, you know, um, casually like that. But this event really takes playing EU4 to an entirely new level. Yes, I agree. And for me, the, the most fun part is all the diplomacy intrigue there's there. Because you can make deals directly and, yeah, I'm going to help you and I'm going to do that. But then... It's not exactly what happens, so it's like, okay, yeah, you helped me, but not exactly like you said you would do. So it makes a little bit of um, spice to the game. Yes, it's not just absolutely. I declare war and yeah, I get this and that's it. Well, um, I'm wondering if chat has any more Tinto related questions while well, we have the lovely folks at Tinto We're here. Planning on coming quite often as well. You are. You are here for the entire event and you're I'm sure you'll be back. Yes. But yeah, they may are. miss We're you gonna tonight. Also be wearing other clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yes. Um big peace deals have happened, I believe. So um do we have do we have screen one? Can can stream see us uh, on the screen yet? Um yeah, okay. We are good. Um I think we are going to begin to transition back to covering the game. Mm -hmm. Because okay. a lot has happened, happened, and I, it's been lovely having the folks at Tinto here. I'm mm -hmm. sure Chat has very much enjoyed it. Um, it's been nice. You, you guys should we'll be on back. a podcast. You, <laughs> you, you'll come back. You, you talk. Uh, very we well. will come back. Yes, yeah, for sure. It's been a pleasure. Thank um, you so much. Thank you okay. so much. Yes. Bye, well, Chat. The other players will enjoy your presence. Go make your diplomat run. <laughs> Well, it is absolutely wonderful to have the opportunity to talk to the Tinto developers about the event, about EU4. Um, they, know, they know their stuff. They know their stuff. All right. But now we are back into the grandest land, um, the game itself. Count has returned, and we have some mighty peace deals to run down. During that talk, the Great Partition began. The deluge, the fall of Poland. I can't say I'm a big fan of these borders, but you can't deny they are effective. I have to say, after what Tinto told us about Poland, I I'm kind of rooting for Poland to just uh, fall completely. I mean, they basically, they're basically almost not existing at the end of this. Uh, you know, I really hope so. We were saying, oh, uh, you may want to have a look at England. It looks yes. like... I'm going to finish on Poland just briefly. Yes. Though. We've got Razan taking a huge chunk. We've got Moldova taking a huge chunk. And of course, that is leaving all kinds of room left for Mazova and Pomerania to take their own chunks out of it. Razan Poland is going, going for map painting strategy. They really um, are. They've gone wide. They've got a lot of woods. You have to respect space. that. The bigger your name is, the better you're doing. I mean, that, of is, course. that is the rule. If we take a look over here in the West, Holland has taken a mighty chunk out of England. Look at that. This is going to have a big impact on the trade. 60 Oh, oh my, my lord, yeah. that is the word uh, for it. We've that got... is the trade note that Holland wants to see. Absolutely, absolutely. Stonks for Holland. We have 60% control. Of course, Desmond, not to be left out, did in the end do rather nicely for themselves. That's a hefty chunk of England they took. There were talks. I'm not sure if the ink has dried on the deal yet, but there were talks of a treaty. Uh, I'm not a big Desmond fan of the border gore here and in England. Scotland. It um, should be improving because there is a treaty between Scotland and England in the works, which is making it a little bit more, uh, perhaps more ordered. But we'll see yes, how that pans more out. ordered, um, aka not awful to look at. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Now, taking a look here, I am delighted to announce the formation of a new. Where? What have they done with my player map? There it is. The formation of a new alliance in northern Germany. The Golden 
Alliance. Is that what it's called? The Golden Alliance. Have you made that up or is that what no, it's called? No, I've not made that up. That okay. is the name. The Golden Alliance. Now, the Golden Alliance has more members in it than you might expect. We were talking earlier about the precarious position that Hesse finds themselves in, but no longer, because they are formerly a member of the Golden Alliance. We have Holland, Hesse, Hamburg, Lübeck, Pomerania. Unified together into the Golden Alliance. Now, the first question I asked when I heard about this is that Hamburg, they don't seem to have anywhere to go. They're no. allied to people that border them in every direction. But you note know who's not in that alliance? Dittmarsh. Oh, so they are not? I did not realize that. As far that. as I know, as far as I know, they're not in the alliance. And that is going to leave them in a very, very precarious position. Very now, much so. It looks like they're trying to expand into Denmark right now, Dittmarsh. They are. Is. They are. But Silesia. We talked about Silesia as being in a very precarious position without Germanic allies, but I have been told, running around getting the inside scoop for you dear viewers, that Silesia actually does have a bunch of out-of-game pact alliances okay. around Germany. But pacts are not in-game, they're not enforceable. People could be made into Oathbreakers, but if a declaration came on Silesia right now, they're just gone. I mean, that could I be, think they, they are relying on those packs. They're it's relying very heavily. Why they were so aggressive, we'll say. Oh, and there we go. <gasps> there Things it is. have kicked off. Yes, I spoke to our glorious phoenixes in Arc Cunilu, and I'm glad oh, to you? hear that they appear to have taken my words and chat's feelings to heart. They have broken their alliance with the Ottomans, which is now being taken. Well, there Serbia you go. See, you Galatia. influenced <laughs> the grandest land. That's what we love to see about these things. Now, the Ottomans, with a fair number of troops still, but out of position by the looks of it. Ottomans, where are your men? This is this is bad. They do still have 34 men, but... I mean, where are they? Um, okay, 16 looks... here, spread around, but that's half as many as they had a minute. Not half as many, but about two thirds. It, it looks like they're all—they're <laughs> coming up. They're—they're they're on the wrong side of the straight right now, as the Ottomans do. Yeah, I, I dare say a bit famous for the Ottomans to be on the wrong side of the straight. It's in absolutely, it's absolutely common. But the thing is, they've got the navy to maintain it, so they can move back and forth free. Of course, they both control both sides of the straight right now. But we are delighted to see finally the AI Ottomans being driven down. What's the naval comparison? Great question, Imperator in chat. Thank you very much. We've got two heavies, eight lights, and 18 galleys for the Ottomans, four heavies, 10 lights, and 19 galleys for the Alliance. Of course, remember, some of that is Austrian and Hungarian under AI control, not going to be as tactically useful as those troops and ships directly under uh, yes, our players and it, control. it looks like Austria is still sending troops in, oh, so... Ooh, oh, that battle. That was a very decisive defeat. It was. Serbia may not even need Austria to help uh, as much as... Worth noting, on the idea front, no military ideas for the Ottomans and uh, quality for Wallachia equal tech six across the board. We are looking at a uh, pretty hefty fight here in Constantinople. Uh, as was, but the uh, the Valachians coming in here on the reinforced looks like it's going to send them packing. We Very have a morale so. advantage. We have a significant discipline advantage. Even with their insufficient support modifier, it looks like they're doing rather nicely. And that shock resistance on the general definitely helping out. The Ottomans looking like it's a little bleak for them. With it the Mamluks coming in from the south, that's the nail in the coffin. Yes, it, it does look like AI Ottomans is not going to be powerhouse. So that leaves AI powerhouse to be in the hands of France, may represent the the glorious and strong AI. <laughs> I'm not rooting for the AI, I promise. <laughs> um, but it, I have to admit, it is rather amusing for me to see AI kind of trance around, they have their, their time in the spotlight. <laughs> so right now, Serbia, I just want to call them out. This is some powerful interfaith dialogue diplomats they've got going on. They're allied to the Mamluks. They were allied to the Ottomans earlier. They're allied to uh, Austria. They're really, they're, they're getting around. It's going rather well. Ooh, Absolutely. okay. Thank you, chat. The Aragon Papal War has kicked off. We've got, uh, what was it? It was the conquest of Obino, which the... Uh, the Aragonese were allied with, I believe. That's looking like it's going to lose them Sicily. Of course, Sicily, cause of Naples. Naples, subject of the Papal States. But if we take a look, not happy ones, which is interesting. The relative power is looking a little bit unfavorable for the old 
Battle Pope just now. Yes, if I were Aragon, I would be trying to, well, take out the Pope before he becomes a little bit too powerful because, you see, I assume that Aragon would like, um, well, Aragon is AI, but this war between the Pope and Aragon may determine who controls the Mediterranean. I mean, it's looking like it's they, going Pope Man for now. I mean, it's, it's I would hope so. Otherwise, we see another strong AI, uh, much like France and the Ottomans. But we know how that goes for the AI. In Chat's the end. wondering about the chances of the uh, Battle Pope forming the Kingdom of God. I have to say, it's going to be tough <clears throat> getting Genoa. Yeah. That is going to be tricky, especially as, if we take a look right now, it's occupied by Switzerland. Switzerland is seeking that warm water port. There is no uh, push for Switzer Lake in this campaign. So far, they appear to be heading south here, trying to get themselves access to the sea, access to that lovely, lovely Genoese trade node. You know how that goes. Taking a quick look over here at the Ottomans. In short, they're being stomped, and I love it. I mean, they, they've taken out a, a couple of our players. One of, them, uh, one of them took part in it twice. I mean, you have to, uh, you have to admit, seeing the, uh, the mighty brought low by the Resurgent is, uh, is always a pleasure. It looks like AQ is attacking to their east, expanding eastward. They are so indeed. Look at the that. The Phoenix is indeed rising. Shivran doing fantastic work and cleaving their way through the remains of Karakunlu. And also, something I missed uh, last time, I do apologize, chat. Uh, it was pointed out to me by the former Knights players now in Shivran. Check out these vassals. Look at these cores. There's not very many of them. Them, but oh this my. is some, some relatively nice development. And then Mazaran, very nice development down here. Uh, and of course, some things to take off a jam. Now, it'll be interesting how our Phoenixes to the north and Hassa potentially are going to be able to negotiate where they're going to cleave east through this Persian region because it's big enough for the both of them. You know, normally it's this town ain't big enough for the both of us. It's actually big enough for the three of them. Persia, a hefty space. They can cut one north, one central, one south, but will Ark Hunlu be happy with that? Or will Hansa focus on going south? Well, the key is just communication. As long as you tell them, hey, we're going to do this, they probably won't be mad at you. I agree. I agree. Now let's take a look over in Europe. Chat kindly pointing out Granada, just doing their thing, crushing Castile. Oh my God, look how few Castile forts there are. There's literally none in my the Castile. whole country. Castile is a broken country right now. I mean, they got one capital fort in the north and that is it. Yes. Swiss Blue Flames, thank you, chat. Oh, what Blue is flames. going on here? They are at war with Moldova because of a conquest of Kaffa, uh, Genoa, Whoa. Oh, They my. vacillate Genoa in doing so, taking over Genoa's war against Moldova. That is ballsy. Now, they don't have a navy, <laughs> so I don't think they're uh, going to Do you to think be, that uh, was an intentional war, or do you think perhaps they stumbled into that and realized, oh. I don't think they, I, I think our players have, uh, most of them flown to be here. They're not stumbling too much but no they're not they're very good players and most are. of them have above i mean thousands we're talking thousands and thousands of, of mm, hours mm. if you're here you probably know what you're doing i think i have to imagine though that they're going to be willing to concede eastern genoese land it does restrict some of their uh, some of their growth potentials but chat does have a good point we have all been there. Yes. Someone not realize he's going to put us in a war. It, but it happens to the best of us. It does. It does. You can you can have thousands of hours. You can make these mistakes. So but I won't blame them if that mm. just happened to be the situation that Switzerland was in. We'll see what happens there. Uh, I imagine there's some conversations going back and forth. I mean, the only reason Genoa would want to hold on to these lands, or rather Switzerland on behalf of Genoa would like to hold on to these lands, is because they present a prime opportunity to get into the east. But then, where are you getting into? You're going right up against Moldova. Moldova has some relatively powerful allies. You're getting straight into Arkunlu. Arkunlu has been getting powerful allies and centralizing pretty well. So, yeah, this I'm not likely... Uh, I don't really see the expansion potential coming from there, but... Uh, I must say the eastern region has <laughs> been a lot more crowded than I anticipated. It has. As our players have been evicted over there, that is, uh, that is something. But with Switzerland keeping their... Uh, military spending low, I have to imagine they're not likely to be pushing for a peace deal there uh, other than just uh, being willing to concede these lands. I mean, the fact that it hasn't happened already is interesting to me. Uh, Switzerland maybe just making Moldova sweat a little bit, perhaps asking for something in return, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that develops. So that is a player war, but I have to say, those blue flames, they're burning a little cold. 
They are the cold blue flames. Mm. Um, it is still a player war, though, so it's of note. It's true. It's Every player war is a source of conflict. Every source of conflict uh, could mean things. They move, they change, they break up. It's uh, it's all interesting, and it's all going to be relevant for how this grand land... Someone in chat says maybe the Swiss is selling the provinces by pressuring Moldova. It's possible. There is the peace deal. Uh, they do appear to have gone over without much uh, note there. Um, there wasn't a uh, there wasn't a uh, a peace deal that we can see there, but I'm sure there is the no grudge. I'm sure there's no grudges. Scotland has been formed. Yes. So if we take a look now into Germany, I think the formation of the Golden League is it's very interesting to me. I think it, it shakes things up in a pretty big way. So the thing about an alliance is sometimes it's not about who's in the alliance; it's about who's not. Let's count the ways. We've got Dip Martian. Uh, we've got, sorry, not Dip Martian. I mean, um, I do mean Dip, <laughs> Dip yes. Martian, sorry. We've got Dip Martian, we've got Frankfurt, we've got Augsburg, and we've got Bavaria. They're on the out. We've also got the Livonian Order across in the east. They're not in, uh, and Gotland. They're not in this alliance. Now, does that mean they want to unify up? They want to be trying to take part of that kingdom for themselves? That it may be, be the move for them. Um, it, but I mean, they're, they're outnumbered. They're outnumbered, outgunned. It's uh, it's a lot of people they'd be trying That's to take That's assuming on. they even see that move of all combining together and saying, you know what, Golden League, bit of a problem. Maybe we should do something about this. Yeah. I mean, Augsburg, uh, they're just quietly growing down here. Bavaria, Augsburg, they've been having a pretty good game. But uh, I see your questions in chat. Don't worry, I, I will get to them. Augsburg, having a pretty nice game so far. Uh, Tech-wise, they're doing fairly well. They've gone with divine ideas. You love to see it. Great idea group. Great idea group. Especially late game, that fire damage reduction. Mwah! It's fantastic. Getting boxed in, some people think. I mean, in a certain way, but I, I don't think, to be honest, and there's no offense intended here, Augsburg, not the firmest edge of a box. So, I mean, mm. if they're coming up to there, that's, uh, that's going, to be, it's going to be interesting. Now, one question we had is, what are the requirements for Mazova to form Poland? Now, it's not a decision. Oh, and I can show you. So, they essentially just have to take... Now, there is a potential conflict point. They have yes. to take Krakow. Now, Krakow, obviously, right now, held by Silesia. Although, is it possible that they could possibly resolve this diplomatically, shall we say? It's um, possible. Uh, possible. I mean, you know, a large sack of gold <coughs> exactly. does speak volumes, uh, as well as military support in wars, potentially. But not much they need to do there. Obviously, the death of Poland, as well as taking out a bunch of those provinces in the north, uh, getting those under their control, is what they need to do in order to be able to form Poland. Now, I, I'm really, I'm really curious. Ooh, Dip oh, Martian did, ooh, actually no. taking a couple of hits against Denmark. They were, they were doing well now driven back looks like Gotland pieced out uh, and that may have turned the tide on them a little bit and it looks like AI Denmark is at war with AI Sweden as well as they do as um, they do it looks like this is the Swedish bid for independence I wouldn't wonder yes indeed it is and the first one of them so we're likely to see the lion in the north and rising indeed I think the lion again. in the north here might be Gotland they could seize this opportunity and really become a powerhouse it's, in the region it's true they do have a truce of course because Gotland was very recently at war oh, they with were. Sweden hmm. but uh, we will see they are taking a couple of mainland provinces they are of course a pirate republic so we've been seeing Gotland uh, accruing nice amounts of wealth not through regular income but through uh, raiding so we, we will see can we confirm that Gotland's plan was not to have only islands? Well, I mean, based on the, the ownership of Skane, I have to say that looks like it. Livonian Blue Frames, let's take a look here. Uh, I'm Scotland. Why is Scotland what? in here? Scotland supported Sweden's independence. <clears throat> I probably, see. Probably to make their future potential conquest of Norway easier. I have to imagine. Oh, I just noticed Gotland got Iceland. Nice. Oh. Good work, Gotland. Well, I mean, so they're not all islands, but they are very clearly pro-island. And uh, there we go. Gotland, uh, Livonian Order. Why have the blue flames what? gone away? What, <laughs> am I mi what am I missing here? There uh, we go. Gotland has pieced out uh, the Livonian Order. Wait, is this a new war? What the heck just happened? The Livonians declared war. Ah, okay. Scotland pieced out of the Swiss, the Livonian War, but not out of the uh, Denmark-Swedish War. I Someone understand. says American Gotland. Um, possibly in the future. It's only 1475 <coughs> right now, but Gotland does have exploration ideas. I will point do out. Do they? Yes. Oh, good spot. Thank so, you. So they do. So they do. It looks like a potential New World Gotland, especially with taking Iceland. Um, that would make sense. Very plausible. And this looks like the Livonian Order are 
finally going to make some actual territorial gains in Finland, it looks like, in this war against Sweden. Uh, they've so far just been growing the Teutonic Order, which did indeed gain uh, one new province in that war against Poland. Well, we're going to see. New World Pirates, uh, definitely a possibility, uh, but, uh, but we'll see. We now, will, unfortunately, be a long way off from that because uh, the game, for those who don't know or have joined late, is on speed two at all times to facilitate the actual grandest land in the grandest land. Of course. Of <laughs> um, course. So it will be a little bit wild, but I'm excited to see some new world stuff in the end game. So stay tuned for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Those, those large scale wars dragging in people from the whole world. It's going to be interesting. What's the AI difficulty? I think we are on normal. Well, let me I just believe we are on normal. Yeah, we're on normal. The uh, AI just likes to... Oh, the uh, speaking of the AI, the Ottomans are currently... Yeah, they're, they're not going to last. That's for sure. I um, think they are. I mean, look at that. That is the checkerboard of defeat right there. And is. you love to see it. The AI is the one taking all of the beating. Because as we all know, AI aren't people. So... It's good to see that they're the ones that are actually taking the brunt of the attack there. Now, over here in Iberia, chat wanted to take a look at Granada. They're rising quite nicely. Uh, they're, they're doing rather well, I have to say. Uh, they've released uh, Galicia, a, a decision that I do question a little bit. I'm not sure why they would uh, spend Diplo points doing something like that. Uh, For they, the meme. They can't vassalize them. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you just do it, you know, to sometimes, do it. <laughs> sometimes you just do it. Sometimes you just do it. You just do it. See, they didn't I take much land. They couldn't take too much land because they are really really pushing their aggressive expansion france right now is at 56 aggressive expansion they're oh. lucky that they're managing to keep their opinion positive so it's not flipping to an outraged opinion uh because if, if france joined the coalition against granada that would be that would be pretty bad now hamburg obviously uh sorry frankfurt rather obviously an interesting uh, nation right now renting out its troops to frankfurt interesting sorry no aachen renting out its troops to frankfurt uh that was of course the result of that poll we had earlier so it'll be interesting to see uh what they're going to do with them uh, they're fighting this war allied to dip martian there i mean you can see these are the people who are a little bit on the outs. They are allied to Pomerania, but Dip Martian and Frankfurt versus the Golden League, we all know this who's going to win that one. This is their bid to survive. And perhaps they can convince the Emperor that they are the right side. It's always possible. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, they have the favor of the Emperor right now, which is, of course, an invaluable resource. Chad asking if there are any content creators in the game. We have uh, the main content creator actually Zwellick. playing is Lerik, who is here in Holland doing his usual devious ways and taking some mighty, mighty land on both sides of the English Channel. They do all start in Europe, but many of them will get kicked to Asia or Africa when they, uh, when they uh, yes. lose, when and those who burn away. Flurry Worry is not playing, but he will be casting this is also here true. tomorrow. This so is also true. Looking forward to uh, doing some casting with him tomorrow evening to look forward to that chat. Yes. Now, what else? Chat, I'm curious. The Ottomans are clearly going to fall. Uh, Serbia and Wallachia taking the lion's share of the land here. Wallachia, I, I'm a little concerned for Wallachia's future. If we look at who's been granted territory here, it looks like Serbia has laid claim to all of, of Greece, of Turkish Greece. Now, that is a, a hefty, hefty gain. I have Serbia. to say, this is the Serbia I know and love. They've grown on me. I felt mm. I started this mm. session a little bit cold on Serbia. I was like, they've allied the Ottomans. They're a little bit shady, but I like their spunk. They you have, know? They've turned it around. They've certainly turned it around. And uh, I think, Akunlu, your truce with the Ottomans, only one more year. Looks like we might be able to get the old one-two punch on the AI here coming in from the east. Akunlu taking a serious hit there. Uh, now a war. Yeah, firstly with Chevron, now a war with Akunlu. Kunlu, again, the one-two punch on the AI, you love to see it. It's Any a good great point power in chat. nations. Ghibli is also a caster. Yes. Um, she was on earlier, in fact. It's so true. if true. you are a fan of Ghibli, and well, we also, I will point out, these are going out on YouTube. So if you've joined midway through or perhaps you're listening to the background and you want to catch up um, later, in the future, you can always watch Grandest Land on YouTube. Absolutely. So. Chad asking if any great powers are currently players. We have two. The Papal State and Moldova have both managed to climb to the prestigious <laughs> rank. <laughs> Moldova, great power. That's not something I see a whole lot. It's absolutely not. But we've got some good Moldovan players, and this is some Black Sea dominance that I'm very happy to see. Now, Pomerania, interestingly, taking no lands in that, uh, that big war against Poland. Oh, no, excuse me. One province. A three-dev <laughs> province. Ouch. In oh. that war. Uh, now, 
chat with a good question. Uh, is there a way to see who the players are participating and uh, and what's the uh, what are the kind of situations of the game? There is an excellent. Uh, uh, post on the forums, which Ryan yes. was delighted to tell you about. The forum thread. Um, if you go to the forums, it is just called Grandest Land. We are updating that day by day. So we have it in chat. You can click the link. Um, check out continuously updating forum post. And we are also updating... Ooh. Ooh, we are also constantly updating our Twitter. So if you prefer to use Twitter, you can always check out the EU Twitter. We have a thread going there as well. We have been trying to keep things up to date and give a good TLDR of what's happening. Mm. Now, fantastic. Yes. Speaking of the western portion of the world here, we have seen the Isles transition to Scotland. They had a fantastic early start. It looked like they were about to be uh, destroyed early on and, uh, and demolished by England when they took that fantastic battle in the Hebrides. They turned it around and we have a representation from the Isles, now Scotland, here to talk to here us he is. today. So you almost not Here he is. Oh, you're, you're Ireland. You're Desmond? Okay, so this is ah, Desmond. Not the Isles, excuse not me. Not the Isles. Misinformed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Thank Desmond, you for being here. Desmond, we all have one question on our yes. lips at the moment. That joining the war against England, it was a little tardy. Well, it wasn't joining, it was our own war. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Fought entirely under your own steam, of course. No help of from course, anyone. Of course, no, no. There, there were like 3,000 Englishmen we had to defeat. At some uh -huh. point, so maybe. was that an intentional move, would you say, an opportunistic play? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, now were, that he's we admitted that, I'm, I'm delighted to say that when I came over to speak to them earlier, the word I heard was pragmatism, uh, which uh, is uh, an interesting approach I for mean, someone you're allegedly allied with. We were, uh, we didn't have a pact at that point, and we were I looking see. if they would maybe die, but suddenly they were winning, so we were like, eh, get now in. Now's the, the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fortune favors the bold, and Desmond favors the winning. I can't yes, say absolutely. I blame you. Fair I can't enough. say I blame you. So talk to me about the current state of the British Isles. Obviously, you've got the British, uh, the English, that is to say, who are being demolished. Yes. Fair play. No, no, no questions there. Now, apart from that, we've got your holdings over here in the West, and I yes. notice that uh, Scotland gave you uh, Glenmorgan yes. in the South. we have uh, an agreement of splitting England in half. Okay. The west half of England is technically Scottish, the okay. east half is uh, Irish. Okay. Okay. And, and you then there's the, the Dutch that somehow got in, and we don't like them. Nobody oh, you don't them. like the Dutch. Nobody likes the Dutch. Nobody okay. likes the Dutch. Does Scotland also not like the Dutch? No, they don't like the Dutch either. Now that wow. is very, very interesting. So you and the Scottish are going to work together to drive the Dutch back out here. As soon as we have stabilized our economy. Yes. As soon as you stabilize the economy. Okay. Okay. And what about well, the French? Be very Do you intend to, to drive the French off too? Uh. Probably, but currently they're so strong that we might not drive them out mm -hmm. right away. Yeah, it's... They're less scary. And how are you going to go about <laughs> driving out the Dutch, given that both of you have close ties to the French? See, uh, Scotland has about 60 favours on France, and uh -huh. I heard there's a mechanic to break alliances. I see, okay. Two favours. Okay, yeah. Uh, you are going to have to uh, have Holland's opinion of France lower than 100. Then? Ooh. There's another uh, option. Uh huh. Scotland declares war on England, calling in France, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, they cannot join defensively uh, Holland mm -hmm. if we also do that Kay. war at the same time. Okay. So you're you're confident then that your navies currently, uh, and I apologize for this, very much Holland's inferior, will be able to to regain control. Holland is inferior. No, Holland. No, okay. <laughs> <Yes. like laughs> <laughs> Very much no. Right? Yeah, yeah. We we need to build up a navy first. That's okay. for sure. Okay. So it's an it's an economic play. Uh, it's a, a, a naval build up, and then it's a get the heck out of Ireland. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Holland, of course, uh, working on their diplomatic game, Hamburg Hess. They are part of. Uh, you may not have heard this, but the more new formal pact, the Golden League of Northern Germany. The Golden Germany League includes Holland. A defensive alliance, mm. I believe. Uh, we have seen some player movement, yes. We haven't mm. heard any details yet. Mm. There are some packs you may wish to read because yeah. my understanding, and this is public knowledge, is that a declaration of war on Holland would entail a conflict with Holland, Hamburg, Lubeck, Hesse, Pomerania. That is a lot of people. It is a lot of people. We're currently looking at the others around uh, Holland because uh -huh. they are... They can't all be friends of Holland. That's certainly true. <laughs> I mean, uh, we were we were earlier taking a look at who's not on the in on that, uh, and the answers are Augsburg, Dipmarschen, 
Frankfurt, Bavaria, but this could make the war for London a truly continental affair. I mean, that's absolutely. That's a heck of a conflict you're looking also, at. Also, there's uh, Gotland, the wild horse, who wants London. I know. Oh, do they? Absolutely. They were asking us before about London. Okay. Scotland again, not in the Golden League, so that could definitely do it. Beskov, Scotland, yes, sorry, just to turn away from you for one moment. Beskov has declared another war on Sweden, which has got Scotland called in. I have to imagine Scotland is uh, staying home for that one. Yeah, so, Livonian order taking a lot of land from Sweden right now. Absolutely. So Holland, I mean, that's a mighty foe that you it put is, yourself there. I, I mean, I can only wish uh, you all the best, of course. They... You, once you've, if, if you were to manage to push them out of the aisles, yeah. how, talk to me about the depth of your feelings towards uh, Scotland. Is this a, a forever alliance? I believe I heard tell of 80 years. Uh, yes, we set the time limit on 1550, and then we reevaluate. And ah. depending on how much time okay. there's left in this event, sure. we might want a big war in Europe. Sure. Or yep. we will have in fighting on the Isles. I see. I One see. or the other. A <laughs> okay. very long pact, though. Um, yes, I believe you two might be the wild card to go against the Golden League. We will see. I mean, that seems like there's a lot of diplomacy and a lot of scheming to be done if you can rival that uh, mighty North German Confederation. Yes. Right. We'll see. Okay. Well, Desmond, it's been a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thank Any you parting words, ambitions for the chat? Uh, watch out for the uh, Ivory Coast. Oh, Ivory Coast. Interesting. Mm. Because have you seen the, uh, the flag of the Ireland? It's the Ivory Coast flag, just the other way around. Okay. Oh, so we can really claim okay. on that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing uh, to see if you can do that. Thank yes. you for having me. Thanks very much. It's, it's our been pleasure. lovely. Thank you for being here. See you. Clap, clap, clap. And if we turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Serving. It doesn't stop. If we turn <laughs> our attention to the Balkans, you will notice that the Ottomans have been, well, Balkanized. We see them carved asunder. Wallachia taking, uh, what is that, four provinces there, five provinces. And Serbia, likewise, taking a nice four provinces there, including uh, Karigrad. <laughs> it has now been renamed only appropriate. Rather, the Orthoman, the, well, the Orthodox are back in, no Orthoman this campaign, sadly, but the Orthodox are back in Constantinople. The Patriarchate has been restored. Oh, yes, they also did take their core. Thank you for reminding me, chat. I always appreciate your little corrections. So, I mean, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. The the conflict point. Let, yes, okay, good. So we're coming to the end of the stream today. We've got another 14 or so minutes. Let's take a look at the flash points. I'm very yes. curious about where the big player wars are going to kick off. I think next time. usually it's good to round off a stream with sort of a recap, but so yeah. much has happened mm. that it's entirely unfeasible to recap all of the drama. So yes, let's look at Let's look a little bit forward looking. What is going to happen in yes. the future? Sorry, chat. <laughs> Whacking my mic there. So, looking forwards, I'm seeing the following major conflict zones. We've got the British Isles. We're going to see Holland and the British nations butting up against the each other. The Battle for London. But this is not a fair fight. Let's take a look. Battle for London, I like that. Let's take a look at the income here. 25 ducats on Holland versus we've got Scotland at six, Desmond at seven. Mm. Holland alone has a 40% larger economy than the combined might of the Isles. Well, the Isles are not going to be able to call France against Holland. It sounded like the golden little coalition that happened with Holland was a bit of a wrench in Desmond's plans. It certainly does. I mean, that is a mighty, mighty conglomeration of nations. And this is this is an area that we often see in these games. Holland, Hamburg, L Lübeck, Pomerania. Their interests align. They've got room to grow southwards. They've got great economic powerhouse in the north. It's very, very often that this is a kingmaker region in these campaigns. And that's what we're seeing continue today. So that's one flashpoint. We've got the Isles versus the Golden Lot. And Gotland looks like they might be throwing their lot in with the British Isles chaps and we'll see if that it's comes a large-scale conflict i would even Certainly go so is. far to say it's not the battle for london it's the battle for britain it's the battle for britain and i mean gotland i can't see gotland coming in on that fight and coming out of it smelling like roses because surely these guys will just hit gotland first and then go to the isles and 
do Gotland trust those people over in the British Isles exactly. to help them out in that conflict? So that's that's one conflict zone. And uh, we're going to do this for each thing, chat. And then at the end of next uh, tomorrow's session, we'll see how you did. So I want some predictions. Yes, let's get some predictions in chat. So um, we've got the the British versus the Golden. Okay, and we don't know if the British will include Gotland or Dip Martian or who else, but I want who's going to come out on top by the end of next stream. And I will remember, I will hold you to account if you are wrong at the end of the stream tomorrow night. You will hold them to account. I want a That's one. That's a lot of pressure on them. It That's is. That's a lot of pressure It on is, them. but, you know, we've got to make these predictions. Well, I chat want is one. always right. I want a one for the British and a two for the Golden. Who is going to come out on top by next time? We've got some Golden votes. We've got some Golden votes. It, yeah. A lot of people seem to be saying the golden... We got one, two people back in the British. Oh, it's not you? so overwhelming. Wow, a lot of people having faith in the British you gotta nations have faith. there. I mean, but I would say they are the underdog. Um, people do love an underdog. They do. A rising from the ashes story, Phoenix-like. So it really depends on if you're asking who do you think will win and who do you want to win. It's true. It's true. I'm seeing a lot of people voting for the British. I don't know, chat. I have to say, this commentator's humble opinion is that the Golden Order has a mighty powerhouse in Northern Germany. That I they cannot do. It, see them. Is it the Golden Order, the Golden League, the Golden Alliance? And also, the, the lack of coordination between the British, it just troubles me. Two and Dip Martian will join one. So Ooh. that's a prediction for a death of the Peasant Republic. I, I, love, I love that specific mm, prediction. I do like that. We I will hold like you that. to that. Probably one more win. I mean... I can't see the Goldens not taking this out. Dutch Britain, I mean, we could get to the, I mean, we're in the grandest land, but the grandest campaign is uh, showing its echoes here with it, the, uh, the Anglo-Dutch If Scotland Union. and Desmond focus on Navy, it's possible that they might be able to stall the Golden League from actually getting to the Isles. It's possible, but it would take a lot. And the Navy, it is expensive. It takes Very cash, much so. and cash is what the Golden Order have on their side. I mean, look at this. We've got Hamburg, richer than both of them. We've got Lübeck, richer than both of them. We've got Pomerania, richer than both of them. We've got Holland, richer than both of them. Combined, it's insane the amount of wealth that these North Germans are managing to pull out of their peasants and getting rather, I think rather we can quickly have a look oh at the Livonian Lord, borders. Look um, at that. Yes. Livonia, they, I mean, we heard some rumblings earlier. Golden Order not so happy about the Teutons being under Livonian hands, but that is a mighty, mighty power grab by the Livonians. They're taking a huge heft of land in the Dif north. Marchand so this is another... also took some of Denmark. So this is actually turning into another flashpoint, potentially. It is. I want to talk now about the Baltic flashpoint. Now, the alliance is here a little bit less well-defined on the Livonian side. I'm not as well informed, but we've got the Livonians right now allied to Gotland and Dip Martian. So we've got Gotland, Dip Martian, Livonians against potentially Golden Order. So flashpoints here, Danzig. Danzig and the provinces required to form Prussia. Of course, we all know Pomerania is got their eye on those, has got their eye on those. So I think, I mean, we're looking at a conflict here. We're looking at Gotland, Dip Martian, Livonia, and maybe it goes broader. I mean, this could be our first world war. We have not had a major pan-European conflict yet, but we could have Desmond, Scotland, Dip Martian, Gotland, Livonian order, and their Teutonic subject versus Pomerania, Lubeck, Hamburg, Holland. Now that is a much closer fight. And at that point, someone like Silesia, Bavaria, Augsburg, these become kingmakers. Yes, these are the people who can turn the tide. And bloody fight. Absolutely. It will be a Possibly the biggest war that we've yet to see, I believe. Um, Easily. With a Easily. lot of players involved. Absolutely. I mean, that's It's very plausible. Mazovia, of course, another one I should not count out. Very important. These southern nations can be very much interesting about how they, uh, how they make these choices. Now, let's let our attention wander south a little way to the Austrian lands, including Hungary. Chat is asking, what do we think about a potential partition of Hungary? Now... Hungary right now is a personal union of Austria, and this is one of our now two, formerly three, powerful AI, owing no allegiance to the Kaiser. And uh, we're looking at potentially a, uh, a petition of them in the next game, but who's gonna come out on top? 
Whoever can grab the lion's share of this Hungarian and Austrian land is going to be the wealthiest person in Southern Europe. That yes, and although is Austria conclusion. is allied with Serbia, we know how Serbia treats their alliances. <laughs> Very so much temporal things, passing, fleeting even. So it's possible Serbia may even try to take some of Hungary in the scenario where it backstabs Austria. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, I certainly would not doubt it. Serbia earlier did have designs on carving up Hungary, as did Wallachia. They are, as chat is saying, poised to take over the Carpathians, roar over those mountains, and get that land under their control. Serbia's Serbia income, income is very tasty at a 25 ducats in no small part due to the well-developed gold mines yes. down in Kosovo. 14 development in that province, so that is a lot of gold for Serbia. Sheesh, indeed. Now, I think that's one point. That's one point here. Now, the, the central Germans, these are, I, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, to me, these right here are the kingmakers. These are the people that will decide which way things go. But to look a little bit further south, we have a mighty, mighty battle pope. They are powerful, they're centralized, they're rich. They could throw their hat in the ring either of these ways and make a big difference. But let's take a look first at Silly because they are just chatting it up right now. They've got a mighty Milanese vassal here, yoinking land off uh, of Venice, like nobody's business, and of course, all those cores. Uh, we'll have to see if they butt up against Switzerland. Switzerland right now, allied to Austria and Bavaria, obviously, oh, and just going to war I again have been with Venice. loving to watch Silly because they may not be the biggest name on the map, but the way that they are playing, they're definitely someone to be keeping an eye on. They are, they certainly are, and it looks like the conflict points with Switzerland. Uh, chat, chat trying to help me out here. Uh, Selge, 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 Selge. Tell me if that's even closer. I, Switzerland is say, taking more cores of Milan. That's got to be annoying, Selje. So, I, I mean, we'll see. Now you're just going to call we'll it Selje? We'll I'm see. sticking to my guns forever. You're going to stick it with Selje? Always, always. I, I will just call it Silly because that's what I've always called it. My pronunciation <laughs> is at the wills of chat. Not even close. Fantastic. Good stuff. Cheers to that. Mm. To Silly. Silly. Something silly. Like that? Chili. Silly. <laughs> silly. Silly. Definitely not that one. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one and practice off camera, I think. So let's take a look down here at uh, Aragon. France is blobbing out of control, yoinking a whole bunch of land. Interestingly, allied to Castile, that's not great for Granada. No major conflict points down here between players. Tunisia and Tlemcen, sorry, Tlemcen and Granada very happily eating up their respective areas. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Switzerland, yeah, conflict points between them and uh, the province that cannot be pronounced. Go. Having some That's one way to get around pronouncing it. <laughs> having some uh, some interesting back and forth there. Provence also in a, a little bit of a precarious position. They did get the inheritance that's given them calls on Naples, but the allied to papal state, the leader of Naples. I mean, come on. Where are Granada's armies? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, they're sieging down Portugal. I think uh, the very last point we may take a very short uh, look at is the eastern region, yes. Persia, and all that. Oh my goodness, Ajam being destroyed. Uh, Karakunlu, of course, being uh, just taken out by one, then the other, then one, then the other, and uh, yoinking their way through here. Shavran making their first major cut into Persia. Of course, Mazaran, uh, Mazdaran, sorry. Mazan, look, look, the right, pronunciation, it's late, okay? It is, and <laughs> chat is delayed. I'm sure they'll tell you how to pronounce oh, it good, after good. you've pronounced it wrong a few times. Baba Black Sheep, indeed. The Arkunlu <laughs> Black Sheep is rising. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the, the requirements of that achievement are, but it looks like these players are getting pretty close to it. Shivran cutting their way through Persia here, and Hassa as well, uh, just monopolizing, growing nice and slowly, nice and peacefully here. But uh, we are now getting rather close to the that end. That we are, that we are. And it has been a very eventful day. It has. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the winners and losers. Absolutely. So the big winners, I think, indisputably, are especially at the late game here, Holland. That yoinking on the British Isles, they have grown magnificently. They have yes. taken a huge chunk there and they've done really well. Chat, I want to see your suggestions. Oh, blue flame, blue flame. Is there uh, blue? Looks oh, like there another, is blue flame. Looks like another nothing war. It's not a nothing right war. Right at the end. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Right Ryzen at the end. versus Peskov. Let's take a look at the numbers on this one. We've got 33,000 infantry, 9,000 on the Ryzen. 
Ketva, Astrakhan's side. And then on the other side, we have three players, Perm, Skov, and Valakia, all coming in with substantially That, that more war troops. is massive in terms of land area. Yeah, if you want to look at the diplomatic map mode here, yeah. it looks like this is going to be basically the entirety of Western Russia at war. That is hefted. Hefty. <laughs> hefty. I mean, Valakia... Whether they can get their troops up here, whether they're interested in getting their troops up here, is the deciding It's the deciding thing in this conflict. Will Valakia be uh, Oath Keepers? I mean, it's going to be interesting. You're very right, Chad. That war will keep you, keep you invested until tomorrow. Chad has an interesting theory. They think Moldova may join against Ryzan. I mean, that is a local threat to them. But this mm. is one of the first really big scale player wars. Exactly. The fate of Russia is being decided I would right be interested to steps. see if Moldova and Ryzen have been in any talks with each other. I certainly would. There's no alliances formally. There's also no claims. So Moldova getting in, it would have to happen soon. Uh, once they get to that 60... I'm sure they've thought limit. about it. I'm certain they have. Moldova, uh, sorry, Ryzen pushing up in a hurry. Uh, eager to take these fights. This is a fairly decisive one. They are a horde, I believe, at the moment. Uh, or, or even are they? I'm not actually certain. So, yes, they are a horde right now. Uh, oh, no, sorry. They're a Russian principality, so they're not needing to take fights in the plains specifically. But look, look at, at that battle. This. Look at that. The morale advantage is telling. Uh, oh, and those oh. rolls, rolls consistently, consistently going in Ryzan's favor. It looks like that's a the huge other victory for Ryzan. Yeah, just not being able to consolidate those troops fast enough. Casualties, though. Pretty even, not a big win, not a big win. And they need to get that war goal. Uh, what is the uh, what is the war goal here? Oh, it's a rise on, it's a rise oh, on offensive, yes. Did you see uh, Wallachia has joined that war? I believe, yes, they are. Yeah, Wallachia have been in for a minute, but we've actually seen Silesia join, oh, which is going to, uh, going to get pretty close. Uh, I mean, that's, that's interesting. Silesia, we knew they had treaties. Uh, this is a bit interesting. What they are doing though, Looking a little bit stationary in Krakow. So we'll see if they actually charge in. We've got another victory coming in here for Ryzan. Ryzan, historically, a nation that's not done very well in these grand campaigns. So it's interesting. How is Silesia benefiting from this? Asks chat. A great question. Future defense, honor, of course, always uh, a concern. But we. They prove will themselves see. battle worthy, I would say. They certainly have. They certainly have. There's another fight going on here. They've. The difficulty that Perm and Pascal are having here, they're just being defeated in detail. It's the classic way to lose a war. If you fight your enemy with half your troops one at a time and they can concentrate force, you get smacked down. Ryzan, though, looking a little bit low on the manpower. We've got 10,000 with 25,000 in the field. Pascal, on the other hand. I don't know how long Ryzen can keep this going for. It's, it's a, very, a very reasonable question. With this many people coming at them, uh, they're going to be looking to have to knock some of these pieces out pretty quickly now of course night is coming the players are going to have me mulling over this they're going to be thinking of strategies this is the war they're going to have time to muse on we've got some mercenaries being risen for, for, for Peskov and what I'm seeing but of course the players don't know is Silesia and Valakia lots of numbers not moving not moving a muscle in order to come in here uh, so far absolutely nothing absolutely nothing from them uh, which is going to mean that Ryzan has the numerical advantage because, yes, they have some manpower issues, but perms, well, perms are worse. They have no manpower with the men in the field that they have right now. A large, hefty group of mercenaries being summoned in the north. It looks like Peskov uh, already relatively deep in the hole, not too badly on loans. Ryzan, yeah, all looking fairly kind of three to 600 ducats. Uh, but Ryzan is doing pretty well. And, and uh, we'll have to see. I mean, they only two forts in Peskov could be their downfall because that's a force like piece. This war is going to be a cliffhanger because tonight's grand campaign is over for the players and over for us very soon too. As soon as we say goodbye, of course. It's been a delight. It has been lovely. It's been really lovely. It's been a delight to have you with us, chat. Thanks so much for joining us on the first day of the Grandest Land. Do join us tomorrow when we will see the grand conclusion, deciding the fate of Russia here, which will be wonderful. Uh, we've got the phoenixes rising in the east. We've got thousands of ducats of gold, uh, hundreds of ducats of gold for Perm right now. We will see what happens with that powder keg in the north. The Golden Order versus the Golden Order. Been playing uh, too it's much Golden Ring, Order, Golden Lee, Golden Alliance. The Golden Lee the facing off against we'll the British them. and the North Baltic uh, Union that seems to be forming. We'll see how the Muslim tags down in and around Iberia and the Burberry 
Eric Coast managed to rise up. We'll see what Pope Man does. And of course, Serbia and these central European powers looking primed to be kingmakers in the days to come as they decide which of those North and South factions they decide to favor. Could be very interesting. I'm interested to see what happens to Gotland as well. What I want to know is who's talking to Moldova, because they could go either way, right? They're not allied to either side in this conflict, and if they back either, it becomes a hard victory. Now, the problem is, if Moldova backs Ryzan, they immediately put Wallachia on the front line. Could be very, very tricky. Could get spicy. But we need to go to bed. So, we absolutely do, and we both need it. <laughs> it's been a delight to commentate for you, chat. Thanks so much for your kind words. Uh, praise the Dark Tower of Frankfurt indeed, and we will see you all next time. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you.